Season 2, Episode 10. Welcome to Joe's Mini Bike Podcast. Tonight we're going to have Frank and Brian from F&B Racing. Yeah. Glad to be here. Right. And um, we're going to do, I think it's a three-hour podcast. Three hours, Eddie. Three hours. Yep. And um, I'd like to say hi to all my friends, if I have any. <laughs> I'm your friend. Oh, okay, cool. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> And um, <coughs> I guess that's it. Uh, we're going to start here with Joe. So here's Joey. How <laughs> about that for an intro? Welcome, everybody, to Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. And as the evil one said, great opening. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think anything you do is going to be cool. So before we get into the big evil Ed element of the show, because we've got the big show coming up, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast is going to be talking about the event pretty much for three hours. It's October the 14th. If you've pre-registered, great. And if you haven't, there's still time. I always say this. I don't know if I should tell them. I always say, and I give you enough notice, that we close pre-registration <clears throat> around Friday, around noon. Right. Which is pretty fair. Yeah. I never shut it down. <laughs> wink, wink. I never shut that shit down. <clears throat> So you can go there till the cows come <laughs> home and pre-register. Just don't tell anybody. And you can go to Campbell Automotive, uh, our local uh, repair shop. You know, it's tough to find guys that you trust to drop off your car, Ed. You know that all the all the stuff that's happened with you and your trucks, right? right? Yeah. So we got one, and they've been here forever. Campbell Automotive. You can just go down there and say, "I'd like five dollars off at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion," and they'll they'll write something probably on a napkin. Like Bill's busy, yeah. Bill have like all this grease on his hand, and he'll he'll write something and say here five off, and people show up with all these random notes with five dollar off coupons, and we give you five bucks back if you register your bike. So it's Joe's mini bike reunion. It's coming up. I'm really excited, Ed. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, how's the bonanza coming along? Well, I didn't get my engine back, but I sent it in late to the guy. But he's rebuilding my uh, power products. Good. Good, because man, I guess he's uh, like seventy years old. His name's Bob Muha. Is he local? No, he's in Mississippi. Okay, so you already shipped it back to him, or yeah, it's on yeah, the way? Yeah, he sent me some pictures of it half together already. Oh, good. So he jumped right on it. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But to get an idea. It won't be in time. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about this though? Maybe just bring the roller. Yeah, I'm gonna bring the roller. Great. So it'll be there, and <clears> uh, <throat> a big part of Joe's Mini Bike Reunion, the event, is based around the people that come. Guys like you and our guests tonight, Brian and Frank Frankez from F and B Racing. Guys, thanks for coming in the house. Thanks, thanks for or the garage. Us, yeah. <laughs> Thank uh, you thanks for getting much. here. You're welcome. Thanks for getting here early. How long did it take you guys to get here? Uh a little over an hour. Yeah. That's not bad. That's easy. For those no, of you who don't know too bad. Well, people <laughs> generally say, you know, well, F and B, they're SoCal. You know, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion, uh, SoCal. You know, they, they generalize it as SoCal if, is pretty big yeah, yeah so these guys literally he, he mentioned an hour but often or not it's a little bit more than that like it is to go anywhere well, that, here that was an hour from the rancho area where we work i work in ontario and um we come from there i mean it would have been two hours coming from hesperia yeah but, two hour drive you know, it's, it, it, it's not bad <clears throat> from work. well uh in the midst of this this upcoming event which is going to be a good one uh <clears throat> and all the excitement we're going to enjoy a nice day the weather's going to be in the mid 70s beautiful we, weather yeah uh and uh, before I get too excited about that, I want to take a moment to recognize, unfortunately, the real part of the world, which is uh, the, all these crazy fires. You guys have probably noted yeah, those down in any of our friends in Anaheim area or anywhere south, Orange County, that may have been affected. Hopefully you guys haven't. It hasn't affected us, although I can see the flames from my work. You can look out down the way and you still see the hillside on fire. Well, yeah, uh, over there. I had um, uh, a really uh, unfortunate situation where one of our close friends of the show, um, Mark uh, Esman, who lived in Santa Rosa, just texted me that he was evacuated from his home. And then, unfortunately, the next series of test, uh, texts included a photo of his home burnt to the ground. Oh, oh. that's terrible. And, you know, you look oh. around, and I've got part, bar, parts of, and pieces of your life etched into your garage and your yes. bedroom and your shop and he had a garage that was just full of collectibles and mementos and autographs and <sighs> you know um none of that shit meant anything it was just him and his dogs and getting out of there and saving one of his mercedes but uh yeah in the midst of all this stuff it was um it was it, it was tough to get too excited because a lot of crazy stuff's been going on uh and for those of uh joe's mini bike reunion las vegas fans 
uh, hopefully, uh, and SoCal, in fact, uh, nationwide, if you were affected by the tragedy in Las Vegas, <clears throat> we uh, reach out to you as well. Uh, we, we did hit had home. Had a friend die in that. Yeah, we had a friend of Campbell Automotive as well, uh, a friend of a friend. So all that stuff sucks. So um, we'll, we'll take whatever little fun we can fooling around with these damn mini bikes. It's October the 14th, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. And uh, give a shout out to, uh, this is kind of like, this is like the beginning of the end of the podcast for the year because the podcasts are, they were designed to steal the ad budget that we had to promote the mini bike event. I thought we'd use that towards a podcast where we can promote it all year. So this is yes. kind of close to our year end episodes. And Ed, a big shout out to you. Thank you. For doing a great job. Yeah, just just hanging out yeah you know how it is well it's it's um it, it's big people love you a big shout out to boom boom for doing a great job um and all those chicks in my life my dogs and my daughter nicole she'll be helping out a lot of joe's mini bike reunion all right. uh we've got some cool stuff to talk about tonight knock her loose knock her loose is a big part of it and Ooh. crc is as well uh they they continue to jump on board you guys see we have cases of crc product I love the brake clean and the carburetor cleaner, but really the grease and all the anti-corrosive sprays and additives, they've got everything, and you'll get a taste of it. We'll be giving away a case, which is why this case is sitting here, Ed. Oh. I found out that it's you can't really keep all this stuff in an area. Like there's a set amount of flamm or flammables that you, you, you're limited to. Really? We have, we have to have them in a, in a closed cabinet at work. Locked. Yes. Then it's not necessarily locked, but it has to be able to be a door that can't be opened. Yeah. Well, we only and that's do this. only two cases at a time. Yeah, well, we have. What do you see here? You know, quite a few. <laughs> we got a few so, we got a pallet down there. So we'll get them in and we'll get them out. They're all going to everybody that comes to the show. As cool. you guys know, we got a, a ton of cool stuff to give away. But the big giveaway is that bike behind you. That's the fully assembled Go Kart USA American Flyer 215. It's a roller. Uh, we we're just looking at it. It's got those cool eight-inch wheels. We we're talking about maybe putting in some Coker white walls. Mm -hmm. want to welcome our friends from Coker Tire, the new sponsors. They'll be out at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. In fact, there's still time. These guys were cool. They, they sent me a box. It included a $150 gift certificate, which one lucky participant will take home, but a, a, an assortment of goodie bags, a bunch of these. I don't know how you call them, but they're pretty cool. Like a fan. It's a fan. Yeah, it's a fan. There you go. See it? You can do all kinds of things with these things. <laughs> you can take this off and be a freebie. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. They're going to be on site, and so is Wade Kawasaki, the head honcho there, and also a big guy at the uh, SEMA outfit. He'll be joining us with his Honda CT70. We're going to see AJ Spagnola out there, also from Coker. So you can go to their website now if you want to have a set of white walls brought to the show, and they've got some great pricing. Check it out. There's a link that I had on my Facebook page. Just check them out at CokerTire.com. They're local in SoCal if you want to roll over there. So uh, welcome to, to Coker. Um, I mentioned earlier we have a truckload of these helmets from Honda of Glendale. They've been a sponsor forever, and they've done everything. They've given us uh, goodies and T-shirts, and they've come and set up, and they brought out their bikes, and they gave me money, and children and meals and, and ultimately it was the helmets that we covet because we love giving those out especially to people that we know need them and that will use them oh yeah well we have to promote that too many guys are riding these mini bikes now that are going way too fast and they're not wearing helmets and we've you know obviously you know different people who have gotten hurt not wearing helmets even wearing a helmet you can still get hurt but you know i mean look, look what happened to several people that we know and you know, it's unfortunate, so. Yeah, I, uh, I, I too, like um, many folks when they're young, you get careless. You just want to get on that bike and go down the street. You forget that. But as you get older, you learn. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about that. In fact, if you have questions for any of the guys, uh, Evil Ed, Brian, Frank, or myself, just send a text or not a text, send in a message through Facebook, uh, and we'll get to it probably during the break, and we'll find a couple of questions. In fact, we'll find two or three. One of them will take home the small engine cams uh, giveaway. You know, Tim's been giving away that camshaft at every podcast. Tim, we love you. And we look forward to seeing you out there. Uh, there's also a case of the CRC that we'll be giving away. And who knows what else we'll give away. Uh, depending on how good the questions are, maybe we'll give away a helmet. But good we're idea. here to talk. You know, we'll give away as much as we can. And, and, and that's the spirit of Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. We've got this American Flyer giveaway. We've got an engine that they provided as well. It's one of those Titans that they they promote both the Predator Ed and these Titans. Titan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the Titan. Neither were, uh, well, I, I wasn't as much as the Predator. And then when they 
told me that they had sold quite a few of those. Um, I said, well, send one down. And you'll notice that we made a couple quick modifications. Okay. We put on a really cool uh, pipe from F&B. Uh, it came with a K&N filter uh, as well as an adapter for that engine. Uh, that's going to be given away separately. We've got one of their torque converters from the folks over at the GTC that we'll be giving away. Uh, Brian, I know you're a roadkill fan. On top of that box that included the torque converter and the cover, you'll see a head unit from Pioneer. Yeah. Now, that is the head unit that came out of Muscle Truck, the popular uh, pickup truck that uh, you've seen on the popular YouTube show, you, uh, Roadkill. Yeah. That is the actual head unit <laughs> that came out of Muscle Truck. We uh, replaced it with the new uh, single-din head unit that Pioneer is now promoting. And Pioneer, I met with the guys, and they uh, they gave me the okay to give that away. So that'll be autographed, hopefully by... Um, Hopefully by one of the one of the stars of Roadkill that'll be showing up. Uh, it looks like at the event, and uh, who knows, maybe you have a chance to say hi if you're a Roadkill fan. And we know Alana's coming out. She's a big All fan right. of yours, <laughs> right? Yeah, Alana'll yeah, be out there. Her. Big fan, huh? <laughs> yeah. You'll notice that she might she might get a signed shirt, huh? Well, maybe he's she might. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, he'd reach in the pocket. I, I keep telling everybody there's no free shirts, but yeah. they're already setting it up. I've gotten like four or five. Well, I'm going to get one, right? It's like, no. That's, that's why I made a point to put it on there. Well, I'm working the booth. It's like, I know. You're working the T-shirt booth. And after the T-shirts, <laughs> after the event, whatever T-shirts are available, then all the free ones get distributed. Well, I have to have an Evil Ed hat. Well, you can give them the 20 bucks. They'll secure yeah. one, right? You know, you can get $5 off if you... Anyways, so we, what we're getting at is this new Evil Ed line that um, we talked about earlier. Nice shirt. You saw the hat. Uh, the decals were, were were pressing on the decals. Apparently, there's somebody squeezing some logo on a piece of vinyl somewhere into the wee hours of the night. So we're waiting on those. I was supposed to pick up the big inventory from my man, Tim, at Piston Driven. Piston Driven is the complete clothier for the SEMA show and the recent off-road expo and the sand show and God knows thousands of other shows. If you need automotive-style clothing, Piston Driven, they're the ones. He probably hates me because <laughs> with, with all the additions... And then we had so many different variations of your shirt that we finally oh. decided on. Yeah. And it has a seven-color T-shirt. Nice. He tried to capture all those colors in his beard. And, you know, most people would have stopped at two-color. Yeah. Because, you know, well, they give you a price. You know how it works, Frank, in business. It's like they give you the price. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then it's like, oh, did you want the color? It's like, sure, I want the color. Yeah. You know, this really is a seven-color image. You didn't want the seven-color image, did you? Well, sure, we got it. Yeah, so we kept well, graduating. Good. And uh, we're going to have a nice shirt. We're going to have some nice hats. Got a bunch of other stuff that we're giving away. Um, we have another engine. The folks from GoPowerSports.com who've been promoting, and they'll also be giving away one of these Coleman hop-up kits, which is essentially, you know, we have to talk to those guys as well. You know, a lot of our partners, Go Power Sports, uh, Go Kart USA, they, they need to be offering a wider range of products, and they should include F&B, just like our friends over at Small Engine Cams do. So we That's have to idea. let these guys know. So if you guys want to talk to Frank and Brian, you have an opportunity to do that. Uh, Bob, my friend over at Go Power Sports, and our friends from Go Kart USA, who knows, maybe you guys can see each other at the upcoming show. That'd be a great idea. Yeah, yeah it'd be like a mini fun. trade show. People <laughs> coming in will be hooking up manufacturers, and that's what this is all about. I saw you had a row, like you've got... You brought in a couple of cool pieces. The first one is that intake, which is a piece of art. And then you brought in two pipes. This is what, a stage two? That's a stage three big or block. Or two, the three. And then we put one on the engine there, too. That's that's a three-stage mini bike counter also. So we've been, this is the not long-awaited, but the much-awaited reveal of this intake. And you'll be have, you'll have these with you at the at upcoming the show. show, too, right? Absolutely. And they're under 100 bucks. Yes, they're eighty. They're eighty nine dollars shipped. Walk us through that, please, Frank. <clears throat> Basically, the design of that was to help the guys who have a boot fit type carburetor, um, so that way it actually fits onto the factory inlet side and has the pulse fitting um, set up for it to to go directly to your fuel pump, and then you just have a boot fit for your carburetor to go on there. This is mainly for the bigger motors. You know, these guys have stroker three inches that can't run a 22 millimeter Makuni anymore. They've got to run, you know, 30 millimeter and 34 mm -hmm. millimeter carburetors. That's what this is designed for. More of a street application, a, a, a race application versus a, a street application. application. Right. Um, we have another one 
soon to come out, not not just yet. So that's a little tidbit for you guys to know that there, there will be another one for the smaller carburetors. Yeah. And um, that'll be available here real soon. And then obviously our, our line of headers from small block, um, single stage, three stage, and big block. I uh, thank you. I know you worked on the uh, pipe that was, uh, you know, Frankenstein went through a little bit of a revamp. You did a little bit of work there, and I know that you've been working with Jake on that. Yes. Um, you were also working with him on the uh, Pioneer bike, that Rutman. Correct. And you've been busy, it seems like, with a variety of things, in addition to still doing all the car stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I do my normal. 40 hour a week at work and then come home and do another four hours in the garage every day to try and keep up with stuff that everybody likes, you know, and it's, it's tough keeping up with it, but you know, I mean, it's, it's something that's out there. It's, it's actually more of a stress reliever, if you will. I go into the garage and I do my own thing, you know, and zone out on it. And that's, that's about it. Yeah. That's good for the soul. Well, I, I think it's, uh, well, I know for a fact, uh, how, how busy it's like, I, I reached out to you just probably a few days ago. Yes. So do you have a roller? It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I never got a response back so quick, Brian. It's like, okay. We can't even build our own. I no, know. And, and we, we want to build our own stuff too, but. And it was selfish, you know. I, I walked out here and I said, all right, this one's going to go. And that one's really not. Oh, that one's mine. And then that one is going to go. It's like, I got room. So he's coming all the way down here. He said it's an hour, but I, you know, I think about you guys rolling down here like a two-hour jaunt. Yeah, it's four hours. You start looking at that. It's like if I, if they're coming this way, they can breathe. They got anything. It's like, and I've often said that. I said that to Mecula Bob as well. You know, right. if you got anything, just send it. Put it in a freaking box. Just send it. And we've been on the opening end of some of those boxes, Ed, where we put together some of those bikes. And I, I've yet to get my hands on an F and B. So. Shame on me. I look well, we, forward to maybe doing that next year. We gave the one away last year. Yes, we did. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to get one together for you to have for your collection. Great. Well, I look forward to that. I saw I saw one beautiful bike you put together. It was shipped on a beautiful... You did a nice job on that pallet, shipping it. What was that bike? Um, that was our large F&B chassis. That one went out to uh, Doug Manzo out in New York. And Shout out to Doug. He, yeah, Way to go, he, Doug. Yeah, he... Um, We're in New York. Do you remember? He was very specific. Was he upstate New York, or oh. do you remember the city? I'm just curious. I'm I, from Utica. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't something. either. All right. Um, but he, he was very specific on what he wanted and down to color. And he wanted the F&B logo on the back of his seat. And I saw all that. that. All that, that looked really trick. There. Um, so are yeah. your hats, incidentally. I noticed you got some new new lids on there. Yeah, new new line of hats. Yeah. So yeah. you did. Um, let's see. Drop your head just for a second there. Yeah. I like I like both of those. So where can those guys get those? Just on the website or just call up? Or? No, you just have to call specifically because these hats I pretty much make per order. I don't have a dozen of them sitting because of so many variations. Not everybody wants black. Not everybody wants gray. Not everybody wants Tell red. me, brother. You know, so you, you, I'm not going to have 50 hats sitting there of the wrong colors. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's, it's funny you mention that because I'm, I'm just in that. I'm, I'm knee deep into that, especially now including something on Ed. And mm -hmm. it's like you go through that whole thing, you know, what color. And, and we, we tried some different ones. And no matter what you get, it's like, love it. It's like having a kid. I wanted a son. You got a daughter. You're going to love it more. Well, you we know, have more you shirts wanted black hats, you get the red the hats. You know, you love the red hats, whatever you have. Well, you should bring some of them to the show. I, I will, provided we're that they're done. That. We're working on that. Crunch I just time went with the a shirts. generic. I went with like a charcoal gray. You know, black riding on them, nothing, nothing real. That special, works. But. See, your hat solo on yeah. you. Like, I don't see you rolling with the one that your 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 big brother has. Yeah, on. he and knows. That, he knows what I like. Yeah, and that one suited suited for you. So I like that. And I hope you feel the same way about yours. What, what's cool about yours? You know, I, I have a good guy that I mentioned earlier, and, and we'll talk much more about this because we have so many cool things there. Uh, Ed's got like a two tone hat with like right. a black lid with a gray hat. Right. You know, I. Two tones, nice. Yeah, <clears throat> you've tried all kinds, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. The thing about it, all this this stuff is like, you know, you're looking at pricing. It. It's like, you know, no one's making money selling this shit. You know, no, you want to make enough really money don't. to pay for it and get get it over here. So you got sixteen bucks into these friggin' hats. Easy. Oh yeah. So you know, you sell a hat for twenty dollars. People like they look at them, and they put them down. It's like, well, shit. What are we gonna, we, here, you want me to give you a hat and a dollar? It's like, well, <laughs> and and it's so it's so variable there because you can get. You know, inexpensive hats, inexpensive T-shirts, inexpensive, yeah. and then you, you you'll get the flip side of that where somebody says, them after, you, you know, know, twenty bucks for that shirt, and it's you know, it's <laughs> two washes and they're and they're blown <laughs> out. <laughs> well, we got we got some good stuff, and I've got a great guy, and I let him go. You know, it's like 
hey, you know, it's like we like we order bibs, and I've been ordering babies bibs in red. It's like they came in black this time. It's like guess what? Black's gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like don't sweat that shit. Yeah. We haven't sweat most of it. I've got a hit list from the park, like two <laughs> things I have to get done. I think one of them is like a million dollar liability from the food truck gal. Okay. Little donut girl. She's got to find a million dollar insurance. God bless. You better bring your own for donuts. the show. Yeah. It's All called the... L.A. Donut Truck, nice. and hopefully she's going to be there. And uh, I think my guy Rodney is one document away from clearing. You know, the park's been a little tough to work with this year as we grow. So we've had to have more things. So, you know, you don't have to just get the trash bin delivered and have an invoice, but now the trash bin company has to provide you with a million-dollar liability. And you got to right. chase these guys around. You know, it's funny. You call up any of these folks, including the park. Whether you call the park or whether you call the trash bin guy or the porta potty or the t-shirt guy or the trophy guy, when you first call them up, Ed, you know, you, you call them up, you get the number or you go to the website, you dial the number, the phone rings one time they're on the phone. You, you can rent the park, you can order the trophies, you can get the, the stuff, the tables, the stages, you, usually with one phone call in a few minutes and check it off. And then the shit begins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to try to call any of them back. You go to some fucking call center <laughs> in Texas. The guy is so busy now, he's got to put you on hold for, tw you know, you, you dare try to get an uh, insurance form from Republic trash bins. I, I will, I will dare anybody to get that shit done before an hour, you know, <laughs> and, and I've got security guards, really legitimate security guards. You guys seen Mr. Yeah. Black's team, right? Yeah. You don't fool around. Well, they require like three of those guys additional, which is a pretty stout thing, you know? You know, now you're talking about thousands of dollars for additional security because, because I have audio. I have audio. Once you have audio, you have to have a certain number of, and each of them now they want a guard card, a legitimate guard card to prove. And, you know, so, the, so the, we, we've had somewhat of a, I guess it's a normal progression, but with that comes a certain amount of additional things you have to do as the show grows. So I don't mind it, but it was a, the, some of them were surprises. And well, uh, some people think it's as simple as calling the park and reserving an area like you're having a picnic. Yeah, picnic, yeah. yeah. I mean, but it's just not that way The anymore. park's requiring guard cards? Yeah, for wow. the security guards. And, and guess what? Mr. Black, the professional he is, he was, um, he was, he was doing some private security for uh, someone from uh, Saudi Arabia or Dubai or I'm not exactly sure where, but he said, you know, I, I was asking, he goes, well, somebody's, somebody's working you a little bit. You know, somebody, you know, we can get them. And he sent me one by one. Each day I would get a different guard card. So we, we complied. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping that this all works out because we, I want to have the, the coffee people there and I want to have the barbecue guy roll in, you know? Right. And I want to have all the, the appropriate stuff and you never know. Something could happen, so you want to have good security. Yeah. So all that's good. We're looking forward to all of it. Um, we have more giveaways. Uh, I told you about the Go Power Sports guys. They they started to pile it on. I had to turn them off. Then I'm online. I'm on his website, Ed, and they have these clip-on headlights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> clip-on taillights. Really? Remember when you had a bike <clears throat> used to buy those rear directional? Yeah, yeah. They were easy to set up. Usually yeah. they were drove off a generator off the tire. Yeah. And they, you had a little switch. Yeah. So, so that we can at least give – these guys are going to ride. We were talking a little bit earlier about guys just being a little bit cavalier, whether they don't ride with a helmet or not or whether they don't ride with shoes. They ride running flip-flops and freaking shorts. black with no lights. But yeah, so for a clip-on light. Perfect. Like, dude, you know, really. And I think Stutz and the guys in Detroit, they've been hip to that for a while. So the go uh, – <laughs> A lot of their bikes do have lights. Yeah, well, you know, you get to a point like we don't we – don't, often talk about riding let alone riding at night so it's not as much of an issue as these crazy guys that are out there riding the streets but yeah they've got hip to the lights but these were cool and they worked and they looked sturdy so i, was, I said hey send me some of those you know he goes we already sent the box out of with a bunch of stuff i'll get you next time they have these drifting cycles mm -hmm. like coleman the guys who are making these mini bikes they they now offer that drifting kit it's like 1200 bucks right a drift trike yeah and they'll be at uh the upcoming sema show in fact, I just got this. This is the SEMA show directory. Hmm. Nice. This is healthy. This is this is the list of all the exhibitors. This is a list of um, I think the Cleveland Indians are are sitting down. That's a good sign. This event, <laughs> this SEMA show, which is coming up, it's the first November, or excuse me, the first week of November. I think it starts on Halloween. Uh, at the Las Vegas Convention Center, it has a power sports section where Coleman will be there. And I'm going to go talk to those guys. And, Ed, we're getting some of those drift cycles. 
<laughs> I'll ask him for at least two. If you're gonna go, go big. And we gotta get these drift cycles in the hands of us and they look oh, fun. Yeah, so we'll do that. And they'll be fun to race. We'll go somewhere and race. And um, we'll get a little bit more into some of that fun and shenanigans. But um, the SEMA show has the SEMA Ignited event, which is the consumer element, the Friday of the show. The last day of the SEMA show, that Friday, if you... Friday is the last day? Yeah. It, it starts Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's all trade. But then on Friday after the show, all the vehicles and a lot of the people that are at the show go across the street to the gold lot. And they have an event called SEMA Ignited. And that's where they film Battle of the Builders. And there's a great car show there. And there's activities. And there's drifting exhibitions. And Cackle Fest with Roadsters. And cool. it's it just, if you like cars, any shape, form, bikes. Well, uh, we have, from the folks over at SEMA, I got a box of 200 SEMA Ignited tickets. Very good. Yeah. You got to make the roll out to Vegas, which could be great. Give you a little bit of a hint of the SEMA show for those of you who realize that. Not too that. far for us. Yeah, you guys come out, and <clears throat> I can see it, Ed. I can see us having a mini bike contingent out there, <laughs> yeah. and with that power sports segment, which includes Coleman. Who knows? Maybe we can do some fun things at SEMA Ignited. So thanks SEMA uh, for giving us those Ignited coupons. Every participant will receive one of those. We talked about the giveaways. You brought some giveaways too. So we'll be able to keep these stage three pipes that you brought, both the one that's shown here, as well as the one that we bolted onto one of our giveaways, right? Absolutely. And the intake? And the intake. Ed. Nice. Yeah, let's fix it. Let's fix it so I win, like, the intake. Mm -hmm. We can do that. And then you win. We can do that. A little home cooking, huh, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. He, he's like the bike he wants the bike and the winner of the roller is emmanuel munda <laughs> <laughs> well you guys know that unfortunately yeah, we can't win that but we get good deals we got a good deal on the frame yeah. these guys took gear, good care of us and that was nice and yep. they took care of me a little bit and I, yeah so that works uh everywhere ed got a two-piece frame did he one of these yeah, american flyers one. yeah nice. yeah so another project <clears throat> for him and we're having fun there so we've got a lot of giveaways register now um a big part of the show, in my view, has always been, and I was saying this earlier, is the people and the bikes. Uh, this year, I get to enjoy the the ability to walk around and not only see some of the bikes with you, Ed. Maybe I can hang around with you for a little Drew's while. Drew's coming out, too, isn't he? Great. <clears throat> yes. Drew and his wife. or is, is Are they married? Uh, I think so. What's her name? She, she's gorgeous. Uh, What's her name? Oh, uh, God, no, you, you, know, you got me off guard. I'm sorry. It's it's Drew oh. and is it Katie? Uh, well, it's it's Drew's gorgeous. Uh, uh, what would he he'd be? He'd be oh, his date. Oh, I can't think of it right now. So she'll be coming out. Oh. Uh, so we've got some VIPs coming. Vicky. Vicky. Yes. God, why couldn't I think of that? How could you forget her? What's her I name? I don't know. I was thinking about Alana. Alana. Well, see. Mm. <laughs> see. You got a choice. Uh, I can't, I'm not getting confused about any women's names. It's like so. You know, I wish I had your problems. You got to be real careful with that. It gets you in trouble. Well, <laughs> right it, Ed. I, I, they feel the same I way about come you, up too. With her name. I don't know why. She was all over you, if I recall the uh, event. I was trying to we talk were, to yeah, Drew. Yeah, we were judging together. Well, he'll be out here. <laughs> He's coming. Ian. Ian Cordova's coming. He's up north. Son of a bitch. Sorry, I just saw something happen over there. <laughs> Linda, you're supposed to come out and give me like bad news. Someone got a hit or something. Um, what about his brother? Maybe, because I can't see him rolling all the way down here without his brother, Eric, or his dad coming down there. He's got a trailer. So I said, great, man. Maybe you can roll Frankenstein over there for me, and there's enough stuff over here to roll out. Uh, Friday's the big day for me because, in fact, if anybody wants to help, come over. Friday's the day that you pick up the truck, and tomorrow we got to go pick up all the apparel, and then we lay out all the mats, all these mats that are back here, and rope things off and bring down the trailer and kind of set that up. And then it's a mad dash, but it's all fun. Uh, I've got... Our guest coming in from Utica, New York, my lovely sister-in-law, Gail, uh, as well as Jerry. Jerry's my um, brother-in-law who will be helping out. Jerry, Jerry, don't fool around. You know, he's like your traffic control. You know, he's, what, 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 what needs to get done? So I'm going to have him handle the, the, the check-in for the sponsors Gotta and have the swap the meet players. guys. I'm going to have him make sure that the dyno, like in the past, I've had people in the dyno when the, you know, the, the mini bikes being tested and, you know, people close up. I got to be tighter there. Yeah. You, know, you can't have people in the dyno. You can't have people. <laughs> so we, we got it. Jerry's going to walk. Uh, and then the in entrance. Uh, a couple things, guys. Uh, over the years, we've provided mats. 
we've provided mats for the mini bikes. All bikes must be on a mat. So I have I have enough mats for all the bikes that pre-register. And I have usually some others. And then many other people bring their own mats or buckets or crates. Please, especially if you're not pre-registered. If you've pre-registered, you're guaranteed a mat. If you register on site, either bring your mat or I've got some of them. In fact, I bought some that collapse and open up. Greg from um, Max had a couple of those at, at the Mac Fest. And I bought them at Walmart. And then I have a couple of the, the traditional stand-up, like the ones behind you, Frank, that I get from Harbor Freight. Oh, yeah. I stick my decal. I mean, I chill, you know, they, they cost me $5. I sell them for 10 or 12 The other ones, they cost 24 and I sell them for 30 bucks. If you have to have one, we've got limited stands for sale, but... I have to. Yeah, your bike has to be on a mat. A That's mat one of the could be on a tarp. You can put it on a tarp. A Harbor Freight cheapy tarp. You can do it. Do it, but that would just look a little tacky. You know, it's well, like so. yeah. But if someone, I'd much rather have somebody get like a buy a, a regular cardboard box, just a flat one. Buy a new one. Put it on that. That that would well, work. Yeah, you know, be, yeah, be that would work. I was thinking about things because I thought about mats. The ones I have are like twenty five dollars my cost. If you start to put out two hundred of those things. It's, you know, you start to do the math, and I have some friends at Swiss Tracks who helped me with those originally. But um, you know, it, some sometimes have fun with it, just like you would a helmet. You know, if you've got a theme for your bike, you can have a theme on your mat. If you like the Raiders, you put a friggin' Raider mat down there. I mean, you know what I mean? Roll with it. Um, we we asked folks to send in questions. We had one from Cliff Judd. Nick. Cliff Judd. What's happening, Cliff? Hopefully, we'll see you with right. <clears throat> Ed. Yep, Nick. He'll probably roll probably down with roll down with mini bike Paul. Yep. Who yep. else? Um, who else is up there? I see somebody selling a taco up there in I don't Calabasas. Know if Who's selling? He's gonna make it or not? Who's yeah. selling the taco on Craigslist up in Calabasas? Who's? That, I don't know. Did you notice that bike? Yeah, I saw it. Mm. Silver one? It's a dark one. It's a dark mm. colored one. I don't remember seeing that one. Yeah. Um. All those guys up north, I don't know. Yeah, that gotta, fire's going on, I don't know. I talked to Joey Elevadoti Deddy, Elevadoti, up in um, Central Florida or Central Florida, Central California. He was the older gentleman that um, older. He's like five years older than me. He was a competitive racer back in the day in SoCal with Dave Miller. And he called out of the blue one day, wanted to set the record straight on who did what and who was a champ, and he <laughs> has that connection with the. Uh, folks up at Bonanza that we talked about. Yeah, Mike, Mike Ferrand. Yeah, and those two guys talked recently. <clears throat> I, I called him up yesterday and personally invited him to come. I called him twice, in fact, and he, I finally got him on the phone. He was unable to come, but he, he wanted to reminisce, and we, we talked for a little while. And he still has uh, his bikes, and he um, still has a rapport with those guys from Bonanza, and I'm still working him because he'd be a great podcast guest. And I told him if he'd ever had the chance to get down to one of these events and bring that old Bonanza bike that he raced, that we'd love to see it. And we welcome anybody, uh, anybody who's listening to the podcast, who's uh, within earshot, or we well, we got a crate there. Do you see the crate? That's your buddy from where? From where? Canada. 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 So he drove to <coughs> Buffalo. What's his name? Neil. Neil. Yeah, Neil. Neil drove to Buffalo from Canada, across the border. They wouldn't let guys like me and you cross that border, Brian. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we'd be, we'd be, there's no way. Come here. No way. <laughs> They'd want a whole there's bunch no of way. documentation. Me and Ed ever showed up at the border. <laughs> it's like, you guys ain't going You home. might make it, but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, well, there's a crate, and he drove to Buffalo instead of having to ship it through Canada and uh, sent it through FedEx, and there's a mini bike in there. He gets to town on Friday. He stopped in Las Vegas. Couldn't have had any worse timing, poor bastard. Yeah. You know he's rolling with it, so he'll be here Friday, well, which is cool. yeah. And he'll yeah. I, you know I. Not only did I tell him I'd be happy to accept it here because I think he was going to send it to the park. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's no. the address oh, on the whoa. flyer. <laughs> and then even this one ended up uh, down the street because you notice it says Motor Media. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a few years back. I had another home on this same block that was my office for Motor Media, and we'd go back and forth. So often, if there was a Motor Media labeled piece of mail it would go there so this one again he took my address probably off of my website or something so the fedex guy knew better he came rolling down there with the box because he knows we've been over here now um, so his his stuff's there and that's exciting we got some guys that have expressed some interest from florida that's a long way to go yeah yeah 
Um, plus, you know, it's nice to know that somewhere where does he get a long distance award? Yeah, he's like a shoe in for that, right? Yeah, he's a shoe in <clears> for that <throat> for sure. I didn't have the balls to suggest he stay at the local uh, motel. No, he asked me, and I I was afraid to tell him anything around here or around Ian. my house, anywhere. I'm like, man, you need to stay in Burbank or something. <laughs> so I, Ian, Ian, it's like Ian. I look at me, I've got I've got the. I've, I've got the locker sent the it's like we call it like the Bates Hotel. It's our affectionate. <laughs> nice. And I've had my cousins there. I've had clients there. Uh, we don't have much of a choice here, right? You know, unless I ask him to stay at E's place. I let him, he's got a gangster big home now. I'm really? gonna go up and stay over there. Yeah. When did you get all moved in, E? All right. Congrats to you, cool. E. In fact, he's got a big event coming up too. Well, it's bad news. There's only there's a couple bad things about the event. There's good news and bad news. The bad news is that E, because he's so busy and has another huge event. Um, which he did tremendously well from a sponsorship um, uh, perspective. He went out and killed it. And he produces it with the help of a lot of cool volunteers. Many of them you'll see at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. But he will be there in spirit at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. Andrew will be there physically. And he'll not only be helping us with uh, our Pioneer provided audio, because these guys are smarter than most of us and they know how to do that, but they'll also be there with the Scleroderma Foundation uh, making water available for donations like they did last year. Oh, cool. Yeah, they killed it, you know, and that helps out. So don't bring water, just bring money and uh, be generous. If you're used to paying a dollar for water, pay $2 for this water because it's going towards a great fund or foundation, the Scleroderma Foundation of Southern California. And as you know, E does a lot of stuff around here. Big, big help. And we wish you the best, E, and your little jaunt this weekend. Uh, where can folks find out a little bit more about that or maybe get involved? There's still time. No, it's an education day. So it's a it's a big uh, bunch of lectures about scleroderma. Okay, it's more of an educational deal than an actual uh, event where, okay, got it. My bad. Well, so much for that. Um, we'll miss you. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you over there, Andrew. Uh, I think Andrew's going to make it. This is like his second time over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No harm, no foul. I didn't see him trying to sneak any knocker loose in oh, his bag when he left oh, yeah. or anything there. You know, because you try stealing the knocker loose, you're out of there. <laughs> um, we, uh, we, we had a group of folks that I'll get to after the show that I didn't get to last time that have been supporting the podcast. Many of them, in fact, most of them, Ed, are fans of yours. No. Yeah. Who? Well, that's why I said there's so many of them. Let me, that's let me, a list here's, there, here's, Ed. Here's the list. They Ooh. love you. Look, look, look. Look at that list. Two pages. There's the list. All Jesus these names. Got a lot of shirts to give away, boss. No. Oh, look, at, look at all these. So, so I thought we'd get to those at the Man's break. He's going to get tired from signing them all. Um, I want to give a couple shout outs. Can I got to uh, bring my own Sharpie. To any Yankee fan that's uh, doing double duty, which is the podcast and listen to the Yankees. Linda, let me know how we're doing, honey, please. Uh, I'll give a shout out to all my Yankee fans, including. Um, my cousin Ronnie and uh, my cousin Sharon and my cousin Steve and Eddie. I know you guys are all watching that game and probably lying and saying you're listening to the podcast too. But uh, it's been a long season. Go Dodgers, Brian! You guys are well, obviously you guys are Dodger fans. Ed, you got to be a Dodger fan too, right? No, no, no freaking Dodgers. This could this gonna be every it. year they get to the playoffs and they blow it. Ed, <laughs> every year. Ed, this year Dodgers Yankees. Oh my God. Oh my Every god! Every year, them Dodgers blow it. Dodgers, nah, we got the bullpen this year. Yeah, I think you got it. I hope so, but it's just, I'm just going by fact. Arizona's a good team. And they took them out easily. They took them out. That first game was like, I was feeling bad for Arizona. And my, I got some cousins there. One of them I just mentioned, Steve. And Arizona's a stout team. That one guy, Martinez, should be like the MVP, right? Uh, he's, you know, he's having a great year. Goldschmidt, he's another potential MVP. Uh, Granky, all those guys. I was watching that game. I was expecting that to be back and forth like all these other games. Dodgers are like, oh, here comes Linda with an update. Talk to me, babe. What's it say? Huh? Three to two. Three to two with inning. Yankees are up. Yeah. Top of the eighth, one out. Oh, God. Yeah. Jump up and scream, will you? Not yet. score since you came in here. There's Linda. And Linda, while you're here, right, remind everybody, no free Evil Ed t-shirts, right? No. Only for my sister Gail. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's starting already. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, see? That's, see only. See. And that's where it stops. That's the key word. Right? Big shout out to I Gail. See where that's going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a Sharpie for you, too. So. Uh, okay. Yes. We got gold and silver Sharpies. Okay. And there's a spot right here. 
on that shirt. It's going to look so cool. And you know, Ed, <laughs> I kind of screwed things up. When we did that photo shoot, you had a black hat on. Yeah, right. So because you have a black hat on a black shirt, yeah. we had to have that accompanied light area around it so it would show the black hat. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell your hat. And, and I worried about, you know, when you do these T-shirt designs, you worry about it being, like, too thick, right? But my guy used, like, a water-based thing. He says we're going to love it. If not, they're fucking evil Ed shirts. I could, put, <laughs> I could make them out of cement, and people would want them. So here's what I did. I hope you don't mind. Um, <laughs> we're going to give away free decal to everybody who buys a T-shirt. You don't mind that, do you? No, that's fine. All right, cool. Because we sell the decals, the decals, you know, and it's all it all goes to a good cause. Because what we do, you have is, any of the old stickers still, Ed? Paul does, I bet. I is looked it? in my yes. drawer. I have one. Keep I think, that one. I think I, I, I have one somewhere. You have one? one and never I gave think it. I have one somewhere. Oh yeah. no, no shit. Um, <clears throat> I've just seen the one when you Google Evil Ed. <clears throat> excuse me on Google Images. You, you sift through a variety. A lot of them are now the pod. That shot pops up a lot. Yeah, that um, one does. But yeah. you're that drawing. And it was cool because, it, again, I brought this up before. Do you remember Andre the Giant? Mm -hmm. You'd be all fucked up walking in L.A. And you'd be sitting down there and you're looking on a building. <laughs> Andre the Giant. Or you'd be, you know, coming under an uh, underpass in downtown L.A. and in the tunnel and you'll see uh, an Andre the Giant character. And that's, that's what the evil Ed that that image reminded me of all the time I used to laugh and I'd see it. <laughs> this one is a little bit more in, in that spirit. I love the dead on capture, but this is a little bit more you, you've matured. <laughs> this gives us a little bit of that. Matured. That, yeah, that gives us that. That's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, instead of that raw, grainy look, it gives you more of a, you know, because now with your phones, in fact, this all comes because of E. I took the photos and I was going to, you know, just use that that straight on shot then we had some fun you know we had ed doing the portrait and the stone <laughs> nice. shots. you may have seen we shared some of those but um he filtered them and sent me like four of them and then it graduated to six or seven of them and we that was the final one that you posted yeah i, I think the most recent one the seven color image and and we have that um we've got a hat we've got a decal so i'd, I'd say hey look if anybody buys a shirt because you know you're gonna have a lot of fans there you really are and that's great I think that's testament of, of the, the rapport that you have and, and the huge popularity that uh, the show, because we reach over 200 people every, every time. So that's, that's 200 people times 20 shows. That's, that was a joke. Adds up. Uh, my point is that, yeah, you're going to have a, a chance to, to meet a lot of people, and they're going to have a spot for your autograph. Make so. that a collectible. It goes from a T-shirt to a collectible. <laughs> so we got the F&B stuff to give away. I have um, a ton of other stuff that's just all around. Um, some of it's over there. There's, There's boxes and boxes of yeah, stuff. And, Torque converter. And yeah. I'm gonna do it. So is that Mother's Polish <clears throat> right there? Well, everybody, we we have these <clears throat> goodie bags. Andrew, would you give us one of the goodie bags inside that container there? You know, when you check in at the show, you're greeted by a great staff. We've got yeah, inside that bucket there. There you go. Yeah, just grab a just grab a bag. There you go. Thank you. So these are the goodie bags. <clears throat> and this year, uh, this year we have a bunch of other stuff. But it comes with some cool stuff. You know, we used to give away the, the cool, we got shop towels. Oh, we, we got, got blue ones. We got oh, a little Mother's right? Polish. We got the little CRC bottle opener. We've got the little Joe's Magnet. Oh, well, we got these again? Yeah, there's decals. There's de Everybody loves decals, I noticed, with their bikes, right? So I ask for tons of decals. Now them. we'll add to this. We'll have, I can't put like the knocker loose or grease or a brake clean inside these bags. So we have a, we have a giveaway table. When you check in, you'll see Mikey or AJ or Brian um, maybe even see Luke and Dave. And once you get greeted, if you're pre-registered, you have your own separate line. If you're a sponsor or a swap meet or a bike corral, you're your, your own separate line. We've got you fast forwarded. We already have your information. They'll give you a wristband. They'll give you a tag for your bike. You go inside. You, you take a photo at that nice step and repeat wall. Uh -huh. Then you bring your bike to the judges and you leave your bike with the judges the judges don't need to hear your story. They don't need to know that you're using 25 zillion grade bolts. They don't need to know that you've been, all right, you just drop off your bike for the judges. Then you go to pick up your gift bag, which is the goodie bag. And then we'll give you the CRC or oh, some of cool. these other heavier items. Yeah. 
and you'll have a chance to um, get get some coffee. There's the donut shop that'll be right there. You'll have a chance to maybe look and buy an Evil Ed hat. Then come back and pick up your bike after it's been judged. Uh, once the judge has looked at your bike, he'll he'll initial a little decal to, to, to indicate that the bike's been judged. Then you park. There's no looking around for you. There's no worrying if the judges came. You're now there to just park where you want. Enjoy the show. You got it. More streamlined. Yes. I like that. When you come in and you're a swap meet guy, <clears throat> you walk in, you show your wristband, and look, here's the deal with swap meet. If you are going to be selling a roller, which many guys do, that roller, we just if Mac shows up and he's got a bunch of parts, I don't care about the parts, but if he's got six rollers, great. I'm going to give him six decals for six of those rollers. When Mac sets up those bikes in that booth, there should be six bikes with six decals, not 12 bikes where other folks just come in and just park the bike there. Now they right. don't want so so you have to have a decal. Whether you're a swap meet, whether you're a bike corral or whether you're a participant. <clears throat> and depending on what role you are, you'll have a different color tag, but right. we, we I don't mind people like working the event. I've got two entrances there and we've been really kind of lax. We let people do what they want out in the parking lot. We have some guys that just don't know better. Like they'll bring their bike and they'll make a big for sale sign and they'll stand right at the entrance. <laughs> and, 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 I, no. and, and a lot of folks just don't get the obvious sometimes. And it's not really fair and it's really not that cool, but I haven't made a, much of an issue. But with some of these changes with the park, one of the things that they had me do was relocate the dyno and not clutter the entry to the park. And all the clutter was the folks that were trying to hawk their bikes on the side. Yeah. So Mr. Black and my additional security now will help out. So there's no lingering. There's no parking. If you want to park, you park on the road. Mm -hmm. Don't park where it says no parking because they gave out some tickets. There's a little heads up for you guys as well. And uh, look, it's, it's cheap enough to get in and you have a chance to win everything. You know, I, I, I like many of you guys, I don't give a shit if I win a trophy. I've always said this. I never thought the trophies were a big thing until I found out that they were. Um, and, and we changed that. You know, we've got some good judging this year. We talked about that earlier. We've got Ed still involved a little bit, but in a different role. Jake Jake Moe's heading it up. Yeah, it's uh, a Ian, good move. Yeah. It's a good move. Yeah, don't you think? <clears throat> yep. I've got my man George, uh, my guy Ray. They're going to help with the, both the Mini Moto and the Vintage Honda <laughs> classes. Um, we've got Drew that will help if needed. Uh, so we have a lot of good guys that will be handling the judging so that, as I mentioned before, I can hang out with you guys a little bit. Yeah, you know, I go through the whole show, and I see you when you come, and I see you when you go. Yeah, so, uh, so just to touch on, on that real quick, when all the guys are bringing their bikes, um, I mean, you'll have your, your pre-entries. Um, how do we, how are you going to monitor to make sure every, everybody's bike is in the correct area? When you come to area? the, oh, there is no correct area. It's judged <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's initially, a, like you we, said. We have a group of, we have a group of um, categories that your bike will fall in when you roll like it up vintage, to the judges. Uh, yes, and, and I'll, and I'll get to some of these. Uh, there is no designated parking. When I first launched this event, in my perfect world, I was going to have a section because that we were in a world of sectionalized grocery stores and Osh. <clears throat> we mentioned the SEMA show. It's all sectionalized so that you can have a more convenient experience. You don't have to walk around to find plumbing. You just go to the plumbing section. Well, same thing with the mini bikes. I thought I would do vintage and have CT70, and they have Grom, and I actually made those big billboards, if you recall. Yeah. Well, the show's told me differently. The the the, the show tells me that the Z50 guy don't mind being parked next to the Grom, and the Grom guy just you know, can't. Their friends want to park with their friends, you know, and they might have different bikes. Plus, you may roll up there at 11 sure. o'clock, and you're going to find that shady tree that everybody else is left open. It's going to be perfect for your guy. And so your... it's open. Yeah, and, and you'll <clears throat> notice that last year. You'll notice that. That there was there was there was a nice little mingling, and and the the guys who have been coming and the gals who have been coming, a few of them I notice hang out in the same spot. It's a group of folks who like to be on the perimeter, yeah, doing their little vapor pens or whatever they do out there. <laughs> right. and these little folks who like to gather underneath the tree as soon as you walk in because they they got those orthopedic nylon socks. They don't want to be walking. Mm -hmm. They got they got blood flow issues. Some of them are older group. They want the nice shady. So there's spots, and we also wanted to change the complexion of it. Let me get to these categories quick because you bring up a good point. And we're giving away that small engine cam. And one of the questions that we received was from Nick 
and it goes to you, Brian. It has to do with, uh, excuse me, the mini bike, the younger mini bike crowd, so to speak, but maybe more pointedly to the group of mini bikers that you hang with. Uh, is there a message or is there something that you feel um, from a, a, a safety aspect that some of the young riders may not be getting? I think your brother mentioned that a little bit earlier, too. Do you think that there's something to be said for maybe the Cavalier style that we see probably more through the social media posts and the photos mm. you know where people are showing the videos of a lot of guys racing without proper equipment and racing into each other and we've seen mm. the gash photos from and we've seen the guys from <clears throat> detroit that got killed so i think what cliff is looking for do you have anything that was his question is there anything that you have to say to some of these young mini bikers about what's happening yeah i do the, you know the biggest thing is and there are crews out there right now that um that address within their own own clicks, if you will, and they know who they are. <clears throat> I think the biggest thing for the young guys coming out, especially to the street scene, is to talk to the older guys that have been out there, talk to their shot callers, if you will, about what needs to be, <coughs> how it needs to be when they hit the street with their bikes. Because a lot of times we're having collisions, uh, collisions because people are going the opposite directions, um, uh, going way too fast. And, and for me, that's going to happen regardless as far as people getting out there and racing. But uh, gear is, a, is, is priority. Running and up and down on the wrong side of the street. Exactly. Not looking <clears throat> when pulling out. That's right. That, that was a, that's what happened to Home Alone. You know, mm -hmm. somebody pulled out right in front of him. There's been some bad accidents uh, recently. Good brakes or not, you can't stop at 80, 90 mile an hour on a dime. Yeah, so I it guess to no. really to really answer the question is these young guys that come out, they need to speak to people that know the rules on the street. But well, you scene. you are one of those guys that know the rules of the street. What would you say to these guys if well you have a voice right now? Yeah. I would tell I would tell any new guy that's wanting to come out to stand back for a few minutes. And watch how things are going down. Observe your, your surroundings. <clears throat> and um, again, speak to people in different groups. All those guys out there are, are open. You can speak to any one of them. But for the most part, these crews are having guys come out with them that are relatively new. And they need to, they need to school their, their group of people within each, each group. Which are is we talking about like basic do's and don'ts and etiquette that's it's like, right guys check this out you're coming out you're wearing my xyz uh, shirt yeah. you, or, or we're in the xyz gang um come on time don't be drinking and smoking openly wear closed toe shoes wear a helmet um leave the drama at home come prepared those to me would be like basic things. Yeah. What are the not so basic things that I'm not bringing out that they also need to be mindful of? They need to go get to the DMV and get a motorcycle driver's handbook and read that. Because you think they're <laughs> missing a lot of the basics, Ed? Just yeah. like you. Well, the anything younger kids in that are... motorcycle handbook will apply to apply to mini bikes. Yeah. Gear, safety gear, helmets are are a must, and the majority of the crews out there now. Are, are doing that they're regulating their people I, I can I can name a couple off the top of my head that literally forced their crew to, to, to wear helmets and are, you can share a helmet too I mean look it's one thing to share a pair of socks <laughs> and I'm with you right yeah but sharing a helmet ain't that bad of a deal considering the time <laughs> you so even if we got doesn't take much to squish the grape yeah, I mean, you barely hit it, and you're going to... So so having something, so I, I would even go as far, Brian, and you guys can even maybe help me out. Um, I've got a pretty simple idea how we can do a promotion. Like, I hear a lot of the different gangs, and, and I mean that in an affectionate way, because whether they refer to themselves as, like, the, the, the one I always affectionately remember as the Squirrel Gang, because I just, yeah. I, I like that name, but there's a few others, right? There are Fast a cool group Lane of guys. And, yeah, and, and, like, I think of those guys, and... I know them by face. Like, they see me when I'm out and about. You know, I'm the only freaking white Italian guy running around <laughs> with you guys anyways, right? And and they know of the podcast, and they usually know because I'm with these guys. And um, I love you guys. I want you to come to the show. Um, we'll have a discounted rate for you to come up, but we'll make a helmet available to each one of your clubs. 
one brand new helmet. If you've got to pass it from race to race, or at least have it in use for the guy who doesn't show up with one, we're not sending you boots. Like, here's who I'm sending boots and full leathers to, Home Alone. I'll, yeah. I'll do that. Like, I'm going to invest in that. He's had that happen for him before. Yeah, yes. So, but, but, but those of you, and I've said this before, if you need helmets, I've got a great sponsor. It's Honda of Glendale. God forbid you live to be 50 and go buy a fucking motorcycle from them afterwards. Right now, they're going to help you out. They're going to make some helmets available for us. So I thank Darlene for that. E, how we doing? We got any little technical advice? Or, or we got any questions coming in? I'm trying to get uh, Myron online. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> hey, what we're talking about is Myron Bailey. Uh, Myron does our Motor City Minute, sponsored by Studs. Um, Eric from Studs has been doing some great things. Eric's doing... What I've been dreaming of doing, like Eric's putting on drag races. Yeah, this is the second is. one this year. He's he's filling up his van at the end of the day on a Wednesday and calling up my boy Crispy Minis, and they're out riding. Yeah, they are. He's then wrenching on his drag bike and drag racing. He's also speaking the truth. He's finding people coming in his shop and he's catching them stealing. Yeah, and he's got well, fucking he's he's got got crazy Harry people public. fucking coming in his place, hiding in his bathroom, you know, screaming they Jesus is chasing them or something. So, so Eric, <laughs> something happened when someone went to his bathroom and locked themselves in the door and started screaming that someone was chasing them. It was just a day in a life in Detroit. Uh, I heard, I heard that. So, and but he's still and he's a family guy. You know, he's doing his deal. He, he's, he, he does all kinds of shit. He's looking forward to going skiing. Uh, so he's always doing something, and it's like, you know what? Um, I love this guy. I love what he's doing, and we support him. Uh, so thank you. He, he sent a box of uh, – he sent an intake as well. Uh, he's got a ton of your stuff over there. He does. He's a distributor for me. He he's every, a good distributor. Yeah, he has everything, everything that I carry. He intake, is – all the headers. He, you know, we got to go. We got to go there. I've, I've said this enough times since I've been back. We chatted about it as we were sitting out there having a hot dog. In fact, no hot dog farts yet. Thank God. Oh, Lord. 12 hot dogs between the... Took them all down. We just had about 2,000 pounds of men out here. <laughs> about 40 pounds of hot dogs in us. Evil, you showed up a little bit late. I, I was wondering if you were going to even have a hot dog left. No, I missed out. Uh, talked about those classes. So so I guess your answer, uh, uh, Brian, to I guess sum it up, was that just, guys... Uh, take the take Wear your take helmet. the word from an OG. It's right, and and sit down with them. There's there's Otai, who's a young dude, who hangs out with our friend Daryl Smith over at Big Daddy Racing. Remember we met Otai? Yep. <clears throat> young, young young kid. kid. Cool. Was gonna worry about Otai, whipping down the street, late at night without no helmet, with a blunt, drunk, making a fucking left hand turn in front of somebody. You know, he's an example of a guy that took advice and, and spent some time learning the right way from Daryl in this case. So I guess it would be um, uh, find a mentor. Find a mentor. Find an old dude that you hang out. And, and you, know, you can still do what you want to do as a young guy in front of a cool old guy. He'll just tell you the right way to do it or tell you that you're doing something wrong. Uh, classes. Okay, so you don't. there's not designated parking. Thanks for asking that question. It's open. Everything's open. Real quick on the helmets. Yes. I, I think that's a great idea. And I think there's a lot of people, especially in LA, that race on a regular that would appreciate that. Have one. Have one. Should we get to a point now where we how many how many how many guys are out there? So there, there everybody everybody watching the show from all the crews know that there could be a free helmet for each crew member. No, to free, put no, on each for crew. each team. For each team. Yes. Right. That they sh they can share at least. That's right. Yes. So so there it is. And you know who you are. You know, it's, it's, um, they're not bad. We talked about, you know, getting, getting help and they're made by, this one's made by G Max. It's, you know, you, you walk into a Honda dealership. This is what's available. Um, you can go crazy and buy some other ones. It's like a three quarter helmet, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, they have a clip on deal for a mask, but look, it's this or this. And I'd say, come on, it's a no brainer. And here's the deal. Um, if you, if you do want one, you can send me a private message. You don't have to go posting all this shit on Facebook. Some people feel like they don't want to ask for something, right? Right. It's like, if, you know, they're, they're too, um, they're too proud. Don't sweat that. A lot of the crews will be at the show, Joe. Good. I know a lot of local Good. crews that are going to be there. Good. So I'll tell you what, uh, that, that's a great thing. And, and that's the least that we can do, right? <clears throat> because, hey, these are our customers. These are folks that buy your pipes. These are folks that come to our event. These are folks that, that are, are fans of yours, Ed. 
Um, look, the helmets are the easy part. Uh, the other stuff is just being have, having some sense. Yeah, common common sense. Sense. just common right. sense, That's right? The because biggest thing. because <clears throat> guys, don't forget, as small as these things are, they're still motor vehicles, yeah. right? So you never know what could happen. I just I saw a photo of somebody that they didn't have a clutch guard on and they screwed up their ankle because that thing flew off. It's happened so to all of us. You got to yeah. do the little things. And along the way, we'll try to give you some heads up. And that's the beauty of these shows is that while you're there, just like we're doing now, you start talking. You can just walk into a little conversation, say hi. Next thing you know, you're talking to Brian and Frank from F&B or Jake Moe or Ian. So all these guys are coming out. Um, this Friday's a big day at setup. Ian's going to be rolling down with his trailer. Uh, Jake's going to be here early. The judges get here around 6. So does registration. Registration gets there early. We don't open up Reg until 7. But the coffee lady should be there around 6. She's got coffee. She's got uh, milk substitute for you friggin' vegans. Oh, <laughs> she, makes her, she, makes her own, she makes her own donuts. Six and get there at 6? She makes her own donuts. You don't have to get there at 6, but mm. uh, registration starts at 7. Okay. <clears throat> You're a sponsor. You just have to be there set up before 8. Okay. So if you have to have your table set up and your bikes handled. Um, you had, you're a good example. You had some of the nicer bikes, the Stella. Stellar. Uh, Stellar, excuse me. Uh, that bike was one of those bikes that got lost in the judging because folks thought it was a display bike. Yeah, we and, had it in the swami and, section. And that's the reason why this, this whole rule about your bike. So if that bike, in your case, you, you, you could have, the way to have done it was, hey, look, Joe, I'm a sponsor. So in my booth, I'm going to have my pipes. I also have this Stellar. Right. Um, this bike, I, I want it to show. I want it to be eligible for the judges. I want it to be, you know, that bike would be entered. You would enter that like right. a registration bike. And you could park it in your booth. Mm. And you would have a decal, but you wouldn't have to worry about anybody walking around to judge it because once you paid for a participant, you would take it through the judging process. And then instead of parking it out on the grass, if you chose to, you just bring it and showcase it in your booth. Right. So, and then some, like folks, some folks have said, well, hey, look, Joe, I open, want to sell my parking. bike. I want to sell my bike. I said, okay, uh, why don't you still enter your bike? Don't put it in the bike corral because if you put it in the bike corral, it's not eligible for judging. You can't win the Go-Kart USA or any of these prizes we've been talking about. You just have a spot to sell your bike because all you wanted from me was an event that you can go sell your bike. Right. So it's $15 and you sit in this corral. There's, you know, <laughs> but if you want the bike, even if it's a bike that you could care less about, enter it, park it in the corral, but be eligible to win all the prizes. That, that's what I would do. Absolutely. And the price is the same because if it's $15 to, for a bike corral, you can spend $20 now and get a $5 coupon off at Campbell R for 15 Remind bucks. everybody what the uh, entry fee is for, for early registration and then when you get at the gate. Uh, $20, and it could be as low as 15 if you go to Campbell Automotive and get a $5 off coupon. The day of the show, it's $25. Mm. So you can, you can save 10 bucks, And for 25 bucks, you have a chance to win all this stuff. Uh, we've got the categories. Let me get to those quick. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, drag bike. Those are pretty identifiable. That's be something that you would roll up in. <laughs> Restored. Rat bike. These are just the category names. Survivor. We have an under construction class. We have a mini moto class. We have a scooters class, which is twist and go. Right. Honda retro which is the vintage Z uh, CT70s and the Z50s and the QA50s. Mm -hmm. Drift bikes, more than two wheels. And then we have some other awards, which are, they're called Outstanding Achievement Awards. There's always a bike or two or three that for some reason don't make their way into these classes. These were the classes, and then within the <coughs> classes, you have a first, second, and third, and in some places, a winner or runner-up. Right. So within these classes, there's a first, second, or, or winner or runner-up. There's also a, a few special achievement awards that will go to bikes because someone will inevitably show up with something so bizarre <laughs> that we would have not have had the, the ability to even think about it. Yeah. And that guy needs to be recognized. There are some things that happen that aren't so great. And we find a, a, a time to recognize some of those folks through a, the uh, achievement awards. Ultimately, when we have all these class winners there, the first place winner for each of these classes are brought out, just like we did last year. Yeah. Right. And they're brought out and they roll out their bikes. The second place guy doesn't roll his bike out. If you're the second place guy in the, in the, in the scooter class, we want the first place guy to come up. Yeah, right. So all the different first place guys will come up, and then by the applause of the people, that's ultimately how we'll go from 10 
to the Brad Elsey People's Choice Award winner, and that's that's how it turns out. Off okay. applause. Off applause. Yeah. So that would be, be like best of shows, what you're saying. You got it. So yeah. you could win your class. You could be first place in the um, under construction mode. And you can ultimately become the People's Choice Award. Someone will be a two-time winner. You'll win your class and you'll win the People's Choice. Cool. Yeah. Over the years, we've had a lot of different winners. Um, we had uh, Mark Lasky with his, he had a Flexo. What did he have last year? Or who's this gentleman right here? Um, yeah, yeah, Mark. The we had uh, uh, Greg. In fact, Greg, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. um, Greg Jensen came in. He won one year with his little Rutman, mm -hmm. who was on the show yeah. last week. I like uh, that bike. Yeah. Which one? That little blue one? The little yellow one. The little oh. blue one was the one who won last year. This yeah. is Mark Lasky. Right. Uh, and then prior to that, a couple CT70s, Chris Snyder, a local guy, his blue CT70 won two years in a row. That thing was clean. Yeah, and then... Um, Oh, Ricky Trong. How can I forget my first winner? That modified orange CT70? Uh -huh. He was my first. He was my he popped my cherry, Ricky Trong, with that CT70. <laughs> that was badass. And we're evolving because now, uh, through the friends um, over at uh, Honda SoCal Faction, uh, Bing, I butcher his name, Floriento, or Bing is a great guy, and he is the Mac Daddy of all the Honda Grom and the Kawasaki pro guys that ride around L.A., he organizes all the rides and takes us to different places, and we go have a we go to Tito's Tacos. We'll end up yeah. all going to we went to Neptune's Net. We start kickstands up at nine o'clock Friday night, and we ride through L.A. at night with all these Groms. I and would love to do that, dude. You come. I'll, you take the Grom, and I'll ride my Suzuki. I took my Suzuki last time. I cheated a little bit, yeah. a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. It's it is great. It yeah. is. We, I get home a little bit late, and I can't go every week. These guys go every Friday. I can't do it. But you start on 2nd and Beaudry, right near the, the 110 freeway where downtown L.A. is, and then you end up, usually you end up at, a, at some place to eat. And of course. Get, yeah, yeah, that's the deal. And you meet a lot of cool people. Hopefully those guys will all be coming out. I've got my friends from Steady Garage. They've been longstanding um, leaders in customizing uh, all kinds of bikes. They're kicking ass now on that new Honda Rebel, yeah. the 350 and the Honda 500 Rebel. Uh, I saw some of those at Honda of Glendale. They look pretty nice. But you know, all of a sudden, it's another ten grand. Ed, it's like we don't have time for that anymore. Man, you're speaking of the Groms and all the crazy stuff. My brother and I were talking on the way here. He said, "There's some guy I don't know who he is. He could touch on that. That just turbocharged one of those Groms and has that thing running 13 seconds in the quarter mile." Hmm. There was a guy at a twin turbo ruckus at one of our first shows. It's one really? of the nicest photos. I'll send you a photo of it. Yeah, it's amazing what they do, and they don't fuck around. It ran. Oh yeah, it ran. These these guys are these guys are not twin show. turbo. <laughs> yeah, these guys these guys are single cylinder twin turbo. I have I have nothing but awe when they go over there and they say, look at this, like, it's like yeah. And they twenty four seven twenty four seven. They're right near um, Flanders. With all those special cable fittings. Yeah, it, I know Flanders. Oh man, and and I didn't connect the two because I used to get to them both ways. The one day I went and said. Jesus Christ, I have been coming to both of these places for five years. I come at different approaches. I had no idea they were neighbors. <laughs> Until one night I went to one of their open houses and said, I'll be a son of a bitch. These guys have been neighbors all these years. I would have never, no ever clue. known. Yeah, they, they threw a really cool open house. Uh, I was there with my brother-in-law, Marv. It was somewhere around year end. And they had a, it was like a call out for the new Honda Rebel. You know, they were rolling it out. And yeah, those guys, uh, Ray and um, Kevin, uh, Steady Garage is going to be giving us uh, $200 gift certificates. So within that uh, twist and go scooter class and in the uh, vintage Honda class, not only will they be eligible for trophies, uh, but also they'll each get a $100 gift certificate, which I thought was pretty oh, cool. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Steady Garage usually helps us out too with the dyno. Uh, CRC stepped up to help <laughs> sponsor the dyno this year as well. You know, they're always there for us. Uh, so we got a lot of good giveaways. Um, how are we doing time wise, E? Ready for a break? We can take a break. Yeah, um, we're gonna take a quick pause for the cause here. I gotta get my Yankee fix in. I gotta see what the hell's going on. <laughs> uh, again, all you Yankee fans are out there listening. Good luck. It's been a great year. I've been um, I've been hitting up uh, Nick Taturo. Remember Hill Street Blues? Was that it? Hill Street Blues? Is uh, Nick Taturo? He was an actor in there. He's a big Yankee fan. And a podcast fan, so him and I have been having some fun breaking each other's balls over this Yankee game. <laughs> um, Evil Ed, uh, I'm going to really be leaning on you at the reunion. 
You know, you have to have like your celebrity hat on a little bit, your judge's hat on a little bit, your, Jeez. your, your. Uh, what else they want you to be? He's going to be wearing a lot of hats. Well, he's yeah. a historian because everybody wants to know. So another question we had, and we'll leave this one at the break, is uh, it comes in from Cliff as well, and it has to do with what your what are they, what do they call those things that you <clears throat> yearn for as you get older? Your bucket list. And we'll get these answers at the break. And again, uh, during the break, send your questions in because we'll be looking at them now. We're giving away that small engine cam as well as a case Bucket of CRC. List. Yeah, what bikes do you want? What mini bikes have not quite been able to make it into your grasp yet that you have to have for you, you know, the bucket list before you croak? Which bikes you have to have? That's that's going to be a question that Ed will be pondering at the break. Uh, it shows mini bike reunion special three hour show special. We tried to get a hold of Myron Bailey. Uh, it, it ain't happening. Uh, Myron's probably still celebrating after last time, although on a more uh, somber note, uh, he's been taking care of his mom. She hasn't been doing too good, uh, and he's been tending to her. Plus, you know, he's got a, he's got a pretty serious job with uh, dialysis work uh, at a hospital where he works. So he's, he's in there doing some serious shit, my man, Myron. But I always love selfishly hearing from him because he's so damn funny, yeah, he's and he keeps, cool a, keeps us abreast. Uh, we tried to get him here. I told him I had a $200 voucher from Southwest for some flight they screwed up, and I had a room at the Bates Motel down the street. <laughs> Quality and, setting. And uh, That he, might not be too bad compared to Detroit, right? Well, I'll oh. tell you what. He, th those guys are pretty good where they are. Although my man Kalman, Carisi, where, 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 where I went with those guys, it was cool. But some of the areas that Kalman took me to on our day trip. <laughs> Look a little rough? A little bit. Well, that's why I took you in the daytime. <laughs> that's why yeah, he did. <laughs> in the daytime. <laughs> but it reminded me of Utica a little bit, too, my hometown. So I wasn't as afraid as I would have been my first time through. It wasn't my first rodeo, so to speak. Hey, before we take the break, a big shout-out to those folks who have pre-registered. Those folks have went online and registered their bike in advance. They got a hold of the savings. They, they go to the express line. They have a mat. Um, they get a big hug. Uh, I want to begin by thanking... Jack Boyd. Jack was our latest. Uh, Jack just entered a drag bike. Drag's got a, uh, Jack's got a cool, a cool little security business, and he's also a musician. He's a pretty cool guy. We've got the F&B guys here. Uh, Jim Stubbe, uh, Andrea Howe, uh, Karen Chupik, uh, Tony DeAnda, uh, Max already reserved his spot for the swap meet, Monica Sanfilippo, Tom Kernow, Mark Lasky, our uh, People's Choice winner from last year with his custom Flexo. Uh, Greg Richardson's going to be there. That was Greg is our guy. How could you forget old what's his name? The swap meet guy. Greg. Greg. Yes. 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 That's the guy. Greg's the guy, and he had a really cool burrito with a West Bend 820. Yeah. That we were looking at. Um, he he, uh, he registered his spot there. Uh, Dane Walton's coming in. Uh, Dane's got Dane, a GT. Dane, shout out to yeah, Dane. Yeah. Um, we saw Dane at MacFest. Yep. Uh, Willie Maxfelt, uh, Greg Jensen, he's got he's bringing a couple bikes. He's got that Taco and that Rutman. Uh, Richard David, my local guy, he's bringing his tote goat. Uh, we talked about the Coker Tire folks. They'll be there with the booth as well. We're going to see Wade and his uh, Honda, uh, my boy AJ. Uh, Jose Torres, Steve Capito. Uh, Steve's got a couple bikes. A Honda Z50 is one of them. My man George. Uh, George is always a Honda guy, but he's the one that had that cool Kawasaki KV75. I think it was red. Hmm. Those bikes well, were cool. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember a kid. I like those bikes. Back in my hometown, a rich kid, Jimmy Carzo, had one of those. A little prick. Damn rich kids. <laughs> yeah. He went bald, though, so life, life, <laughs> life don't fuck around. You got to get a nice mini bike, you're going to pay for it. Um, Nathan Lawson, Taco 22 registered. Brian Shaver's got a, a few uh, Bajas. I posted some photos online. Same thing with our man, Mark Hartman. Uh, Rolf Storley, funny bastard. He registered. Uh, James Grant. And uh, I don't know, a few other folks uh, who have pre registered. Pre-registration closes at 6 p.m. sharp Friday. Uh-huh. Does it? Does it really? Oh. We have uh, over 58 bikes pre-registered, which cool. is uh, uh, on par with what we did pre-registration wise. A lot of our guys are not credit card online guys. They're going to bring fucking $20 and yeah. show up, right? Yeah. That's how it goes. That's me. Yeah. So with that said, Ed, um, we'll, we'll probably be looking at, hopefully, hopefully we'll knock down the 200 bike uh, wall this year. I hope that would so. be cool. If not, uh, we get close, we'll lie about it anyways and say that we did. 
Yeah, right? Say we got Who cares? Two, we can do what we want. It's Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. It's our special show issue, uh, our special show edition. I'm getting all excited about the Yankee game. A big shout out to our friends from Go Kart USA for making that giveaway uh, available. Our friends from F and B, all these cool pipes and intakes. We may need some stage twos for some of our guys too. So they, if they win a stage three and they want a stage two, they can make a call. We'll we hook can them up. Custom make pipes for anything. Uh, also, there's a group out of Nashville. They're online. The guy's name is Jim Helvata, El Helvati, H L A V A T I. On the twelfth of November, which is a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving in Nashville, Tennessee, he has the itty bitty mini bike shitty ditty. <laughs> nice. And it's a uh, it's a little um, small town event that's making itself available to go big time. Uh, we're gonna send him some stuff, Ed. Maybe we'll send him a bunch of stuff that's left over and oh, some yeah. stuff from the mini bike show. Who knows? Maybe the F&B guys will make something available for him as well. We're going to take care of our guys, Jim. It's the Itty Bitty <laughs> Shitty Diddy. No, the Itty Bitty Mini Bike Shitty Diddy event. It's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. If you're anywhere close on the 12th, we've got choppers coming up. Don't forget, OJ's been out a couple weeks. You hey. never know what the fuck's going to go on over here. <laughs> uh, we got easy judging. Don't forget to bring a mat. Don't be a mooch. Don't plan on bringing your bike and put it for sale sign around the entrance because otherwise you're going to meet Mr. Black and team. You don't want to meet Mr. Black and team. Not on a bad day. We have a professional announcer. I already talked about him. Um, Clarence Barnes. Cool. Yep. Uh, so that's it. We're going to take a little break. Uh, we'll be right back after uh, a little pause for the cause. Thanks for listening in. Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast Special Show Issue. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Joe's Mini Bike Podcast, Season 2, Episode 10. For the last maybe hour, we're going to go, I think. An hour. Joe's already we cooling himself forward. off with a Coker tire. Yeah, Coker tire. And, I think and I'm, I'm sweating because it's Yankee. It's the, it's the ninth inning. It's the, at least, it's at the least bottom we don't of. have any bees flying around tonight. Oh, the words got out. That word's got out with those bees. They know. They know. <laughs> yeah, they get the lose. break clean. We'll, we'll Breaker, break clean. Knocker. It's the bottom of the ninth. Yanks up five to two. Cleveland's got a man on first. I don't think there's any outs. We we gotta we gotta pull this out. I'm gonna be a little preoccupied, but welcome back everybody to the second half of the podcast. We're here with Frank and Brian. Well, not just Frank and Brian. Not Evil anymore. Ed. No, Ed. no, 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 no. Not that's not what I meant. Is not just Frank and Brian anymore. It's the Yankees Hall game. Of Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yes. <laughs> what, what Ed's uh, alluding to is uh, the induction of both Brian and Frank. Frank has of F and B Racing into the Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Hall of Fame, class of 2017. Another big highlight of the show. Uh, does that mean anything to you guys in the big scheme Absolutely of things? I mean, you, you've gotten a lot of knocks. being part of this whole thing is just means a lot to me i mean being able to be part of the industry giving people stuff that they need and all for having we sold fun a lot of pipes absolutely we sell a lot of pipes it wasn't and, for it, and, pipes, it's, you know? and it's all to have fun because that's what it's all about joe yeah it's having fun without a doubt and we talked about some of the things that uh happened uh in in a typical day in life and it's uh, it's not always fun so the the fact that we are still able you know close to 60s how old are you, Brian? 60. You're in your 30s? Yeah. You know, you're a little bit older, your older brother. Um, 61. 
we uh, we have many things that that we could deem as being fun. You know, some people are into all kinds of things. Uh, the fact that we're our fun comes in the form of these two little or these small two wheel little wonders is um, is pretty cool, and uh, that's the spirit of the event. So, those of you who are close to uh, getting your bike done, let's just say it's not going to make it. Like Ed sent his engine out, and he knows that that'll never get back in enough time, but he can still bring his roller out. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring a, a survivor. Okay. And uh, I guess put the roller in under construction. Beautiful. And you just roll up. Brian, what are you bringing? I'm going to bring our, uh, our orange bike out. Oh, I love that bike. Yeah, the yeah, one we brought sh- to As soon as I saw it on Anna Street. First podcast we brought it to, yes. I think. Yes. We, yeah, we've done quite a, fi- quite a bit to it since then. You never then. named the bike? Or it's, it's the orange bike, right? It's it's a clockwork orange. Just the there name. you I remember that. Yeah. What a great film that was. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Hall of Fame... I remember when I first, I'm gonna, I was chewing a mint, because I had to do something. I'm gonna bring out my red bike too for the dyno. Great. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, I think Charles, what did he do? 32 horsepower. 29. I thought it was 30 some. No, he was upset he didn't get it. Okay, and I've got a plaque I've got to give to Joey, from the year before. He still hasn't picked that up. No, I saw him. <laughs> he's a really cool guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's a real laid back. Yeah, I like his sons too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Joey's cool. Deshaun's a real cool guy. Yeah. I I, I hope I see those guys. I also hope years. I well, see, you'll see there was a there was a guy who showed up last year. I, his name eludes me. Edwin. Oh yeah, that's my buddy uh-huh. Edwin. Edwin, if you hear it, uh Guardreel Dave, you know I'm reaching out. Uh, unfortunately Temecula Bob and uh Taco Bill can't make it. Mm. Really? Uh Temecula Bob, I don't know why. Uh, Taco Bill has a, a really cool family function, like a grandkids christening or something. Something's going on up there, you know. So uh, both of those guys, as much as we'd love to have them, you know, enjoy that part of your life too. You know, there's nothing better than those special times with your family. We'll catch you the next time through. Did you know, we find out? Um, I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead. I ran into Taco Bill. Where? In Santa Ana at a powder coating shop. If he's watching, yeah, he knows the place. <laughs> what was the place? Um, it's, it's in Santa. It's called MB. Uh, they do a good job? Yeah, they do good work. I saw a couple of, of tacos outside and uh, clicked a couple pictures of them. And I walked in, I saw him, but he was busy. He was talking to the owner, and he walked out before I could talk to him. I've never met him, uh, like, officially. I've seen him. Are you really? No. Yeah. My, never met him. My, my true first conversation with him is as I sit here with you when he came out as a guest of the podcast. Really? Uh, yeah. I was, um, you know, Ed was a big help. In a variety of ways, not only co-hosting the podcast, but also helping me attract some of the the, the guests that we had early on. Particularly, the guy like he's a perfect example, Taco Bill. Taco Bill really didn't know me or what the hell I where Locker Center was or get on some mm-hmm. podcast. But through a little help from Ed, we were able to lure him in. And my God, I could have kept talking to him forever. He's just such a really cool guy, and he's he's like many of you guys. You know, he's really into cars as well, and. His he, bikes are clean. Being in his shop and, mm-hmm. you know, he's totally cool results of the work that he does. He's just one of those guys, you know. Fashion. Just one of those cool guys. And um, we've got a, a bunch of them coming over. Uh, I mentioned some of the guys that help at registration, but and we also talked about some of the folks that help us with the uh, judging. And we have some folks that kind of help out at the store. Uh, Boom Boom and Nicole and Dave and uh, Gail and Jerry are helping out. We've got Lou from the Dino, who does a good job. We talked about our food truck guys. The bike corral, uh, again, depending on what your situation is, if you just want to drop it and sell it, I would I would encourage everyone who's either selling or buying, like anything else, get there early. Most of the good stuff is done before really the table's set up. I noticed that there's people just harping on Mac before he's even got all his stuff out. And oh yeah, you know they they're they're hawking in the parking lots, watching the guys unload the real smart guys. Oh yeah, and uh, don't be dumb. If um, if you see somebody that's got a bike you want to buy, bring him a cup of coffee from L.A. Donuts. Start the conversation off right. Bring him over a nice cup of coffee and see how that works out Did for you. Did you say that um, Drew from uh, OMB was going to be there this we, year? We have had. Uh, I have had an email with him. Said he's hoping to be there. Right. Uh, Ed again. Yes! The New York Yankees will be facing the Houston Astros in the American League Championship Series. All right. <laughs> they have taken down the American League defending champion Cleveland Indians coming back from a 2-0 deficit. <laughs> the New York Yankees go on to the next round. Congratulations to everybody. Nick Turturro. Yeah, all not my bad. friends back in New York. Not bad, Yankees. My niece, Bree, and uh, Mike. 
congratulations to you. I know you're big Yankee fans, and a big shout out to uh, Gary Kalea, the the Yankees' biggest fan back there in Utica. Oh, I'm sorry, you're a Met fan. Um, all right, so now that that's done, boy, Linda's going to get it tonight, and only mean that in a good way. So now that we're at podcast, uh, our, our second half of the podcast, that's that was good. I need CRC. That. CRC. Knock or lose. Knock, Knock or lose. lose. <laughs> yeah. The, the phone's going, knocking off the, the wall there. Wow, those Yankees. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate myself for winning $25 from Gary Case, uh, from winning $25 from Jim Savis, and from winning $25 from Joe Dodato. Thank you very much. Uh, I have kept all those text messages you sent me when we were down two games to nothing. <laughs> Classy guy. And now and you're $75 show those up. Until a little bit later. Oh, no, congratulations, Cleveland. Man, those guys won 20 or 30 games in a row there. And they're fucking winning like the Dodgers. They broke a record for consecutive wins uh, this year. I don't think any teams won as many games, but they didn't win this one. So, Yankees. So, Joe's champs. a happy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A happy man. And um, so far, uh, we've got a couple questions, Ed. Uh, did you, at the break, Cliff had asked if you um, had a bike that you had to get that's on your bucket list. Is there a mini bike out there that's uh, eluded you so far? No, I got it already. Huh. Oh, the Bonanza, the recent Bonanza, yeah. How about that? Somebody who's finally fucking satisfied. <laughs> that's right? It. That's, that's it. an that's early Bonanza. What year is that? 63. Or Oh, wow. Very nice. Very yep. early. I've been waiting for one for a long time. There. there there's an example of someone that just it gets to that point where you... He doesn't have to have. He's he's, he's found the mother load. He's he's got what he wants. It yep. Took a long time to find one, but <laughs> Charles Mosley just joins us. Hi, Charles. How are you? What's up, Charles? Uh, Temecula Bob. MDB. Looks like he joined. Um, Scott Stubbins from Crispy Minis, staying up late. What's up, Scott? Scott, uh, what's up? Uh, Chad Jenner, uh, Jake Mo. What's happening? My what's man up, Justin Jake? Wilcox. Yep, Jake. Jake, get down early. We got to. I can put you up in one of those Roach hotels down there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Well, these guys live so far away, you know. It's like I, you know, those those guys got a three o'clock wake up call. Fucking Ian left the day before. He's in Hanford. I didn't yeah. even know there was a Hanford in California. It's like three and a half, four hours. Yeah. They got us by a couple hours. Hey, uh, Frank and Brian, Josh Vargas wants to know how long have you guys been in the scene? For those folks that don't know you as, as well as some of the SoCal guys. How you guys been in the scene? What thirty years? No, no, your brother. No, well, you have right. Well. Not that, not quite that long. Not the mini bike scene. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I've been, I've been doing all cars and stuff like that. Like know, I'm thinking, you're in your forties. Yes. And I'm thinking you've been into mini bikes since you were a teen. No, not that long. Oh, okay, more, so yeah, okay. More so dirt bikes as yeah. kids. I got it. The first yeah. show we did, we uh, talked about that a little bit, but yeah. As far as the mini bike scene, I met Charles in in 2005. Prior to that, I had a cat that I was racing before I met him. So, over a decade. Okay. And same for you, Frank? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember the first time my brother came to me with um, with a flathead, and he said, hey, bro, can we um, port this cylinder head? And I was in the shop at work. And the whole block. Yeah, I just, I, just sat, I just sat it on the bench top and just started going to work on it. Yeah, and it, was a, it was a Raptor. <laughs> it was a Raptor 3. And then uh, Mosley helped me out with a carburetor choice and a cam choice. And I got it to run pretty good. Yep. And then it was history after that, 2000, maybe eight, I went out and met all them and it took off, got hooked. Well, it seems a lot longer than that. Oh, it Like so many flies. things too, you know, we're, we're just counting off the number of stupid podcasts we've done and it seems like it's just gone by so quick. Yeah. They say when you get a little bit older times and things go by a little bit quicker That's what as my well. mom says. Yeah. So Josh. That's what I say. Um, Josh Vargas. <sighs> Uh, about a decade or so, these guys have been on the mini bike scene, but been car guys for a lot longer Whole than life. that. And a lot of that came from your dad, as we talked about, too, back in, in the past. Uh, your pipes, I mentioned I was over at Stutz, and who he had a pretty impressive inventory. A lot of different pipes, too. You know, he had mostly yours, but your your pipes just stood out. Despite the different lengths and styles and names, that's got to make you guys feel good when you know that that's that the feel for your product is just so universally uh, received. Yeah, and that and that goes, I mean, way back. I mean, it, where it started. We, we can talk all the way from the beginning. And I have to say, Charles MDB Charles, um, he wanted a custom pipe made by me, 
and he told me these are the specific sizes that I want, and I made the I made him the pipe. Yeah. And from then, I just changed up different things. And back then, it was more of a drag style pipe. And then I changed it for the mini bikes because people would buy my drag style pipes. They would hit the frame. I said, okay, well, I'm going to come to the center exit, like I made here. I'm going to come up and make a couple turns in there, and make it work on just about any bike coming out the middle because if it comes out above the tire it can't hit the frame rail and it just evolved from there and then big block pipes and so on and it's funny the other day i just uh went through a box that was in the garage and we had some of the very very first pipes that i ever did oh how and, cool and they were they were mig welded and my brother had them on his bike and he'd break he'd break the header or do something to it and i'd go back and i'd weld it in and fix it all up and those are all just still sitting there it's i have funny. an original header or i have a, the original center exit we did even further back than that mm -hmm. you know you ask uh, you know the 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 satisfaction really i mean my brother just refined the whole thing you know when it first started with the headers i have a picture of the very first one we did and and uh he just <laughs> took it to a whole nother level and and it's it it it's really it's really blown up you know and it's uh it feels it feels good and it's just so it's more than it's more than making a few dollars on them you know it's it's really watching people and and seeing them happy with the sound and the performance gains and and stuff like that i so. could always tell is as crazy as it may sound i can tell one of my pipes compared to almost anybody else's out there yeah just and that big, sound and the and, tone and well a big part of it is because of the size of the id on the head pipe and a lot of people don't know how to get that right and then the lengths of the pipes and like i said charles is the first one to say these are the lengths i want and this is why and then like my brother said i refined that i went to through and i did different things different lengths for these pipes for those pipes the flanges you know? we were and fine we went through a process a period where there are original flanges uh we were running into problems with them not fitting like when the predators first came out we had already started running the headers in you know dozen count orders and the first flanges wouldn't fit on on the on the predators when they came out so they wouldn't fit flat or they they're no, it's because because the placement of the studs on the head moved ah. for the the predators sure so it wouldn't go on and now i didn't want to make one set of headers for predators one set for hondas one set for i just made a universal flange sure that, they would that fit the gap all of them right yep. just yeah. like this so is there a big is there that big of a disparity from app engine to engine did you find early on, you know, we're the Honda we're, heads and Predator heads? Yeah, huh. yeah. Honda head and Predator head. I think it's probably about 15 millimeters further spread out, so it just won't go on there. And then, of course, you'll have your guys who just say, you know what, this just has to fit. And then they'll take a grinder and they'll start grinding it all out, and it turns the flange real thin. And no, <laughs> or try to bend them themselves and tell us they broke. <laughs> well, sometimes it's a, a sneak peek at some of those crude prototypes that really tell you how far you've come. Yeah. It's you true. know, when you look back at those, Brian, and then you take a look at all the advancements and oh. the, the, the mock-ups to the, mm -hmm. you know, the ones that you had to go back and retool. And, you know, over my years working in the automotive industry, I've had the chance to visit many manufacturers, especially the SoCal automotive aftermarket guys. Many of them are names you're familiar with where after a while getting to know them and being friends and doing business with them, they share some of those intimate things. And whether they're the original safety jackets that Jim Deese showed me when I went to call on him in Glendale, or see Pete Jackson's original gear drive, or have the chance to see things like hooker headers first templates when you're yep. visiting those guys in Ontario, you know, as an example, yep. uh, whenever, no matter how busy, no matter who's there, whenever any of the guys who started those companies have a chance to reach into that drawer, and show you that first thing that got it all going, you know. And they show it like a they would show the off their proud child and some. Yeah, it's amazing because it all started from this. It's like you know what? Absolutely. They didn't they didn't sit there trying to hollow out a camshaft because they thought they were going to quadzillionaires. They did it because they were trying to get maybe a little bit quicker on the track to break someone's balls on Saturday. Yeah, it was no different than what we do on the computer now. Yeah, they just yeah. they benched race face to face and and having that little edge. So yeah. the fact that you caught on on something that to you, you know, 
you like it because you're into it and you see the difference that it makes obviously but putting that smile on that person's face when they get that pipe mm-hmm. you know well, i just made a custom pipe for a guy for a bicycle yeah and it had to be specified he wanted it to be 23 inches long i said well my pipes don't we all oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and my pipes aren't all normally you know that long they're 17 and you want it longer i can make a four stage for you whatever his engine wasn't even really a crazy engine but he just wanted it to be a longer pipe so his said, builder okay. requested yeah, these his, lengths yeah his builder did request that so i built him that pipe and he posted it on his uh on his page and stuff, and it's it looks really neat. Yeah, it's He's a four really stage. It's it. a nice. It's a oh wow, pipe. four stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so many people will use that moniker custom, and then it's like, well, can you do this? Like, now nah, we we either got A or B. It's like, well, I thought I could get a custom can, deal here. It's they're like, custom. Nah, they're custom the you way they are. You can take one guess what the first thing was that he said after he bolted it on the bike. He loved it. No, he said how loud it was. Oh, <laughs> so that's I, what happens when you run a straight header. It's going to be loud. I was I'm uh, not used to it. I've got some guests coming over, and I had some work done. And um, the guy that helps me out, Jose, he was at the mini bike show last year. He helps me with everything I do around here, whether it's the pool stuff or um, little things, concrete work. And he just got the fever from being around, the mini bike fever. Mm -hmm. And he has his young daughter that helps Linda selling apparel. And he... He'll send me text. He's the guy who's sending me three or four text. Text. I want to buy a mini bike for Maya, his daughter. And then he'd send me pictures of modified bikes. Like, dude, your daughter can't ride that bike. <laughs> so he, he finally bought something. He bought a Did one you of buy those. one of the minis. No, he bought he bought a uh, he bought the wrong one. Uh, but he, I knew, despite what he was saying, he was buying it for himself. He bought one of these three piece little Indians with the Springer front end, the ones you can get now at Allied Leisure, mm-hmm. with a Predator on it. So he rolls it over here, and uh, it has a flat tire. No chain, uh, stock Predator, uh, needed a couple bolts to bolt to the frame, the brake wasn't working, <laughs> and... What else is new, right? And, and you know, it just it had it was left outside. Yeah. It was left outside, and so I had a chain, I had a tube, I took off the uh, air cleaner, put a different one on, uh, took off his that box exhaust, put on one of your pipes. Yeah. Uh, started first pull. His seat was the last thing we didn't get to because he had to leave. It needed to be tightened down. But it started first pull. Your pipe sounded badass. It's loud. He took off on it. The seat started wobbling. He turned it off. He threw it in the back of his truck. It's like, no, no, you can't just... He had, he had all these trees on top of his truck and then he just threw the mini bike on top. Oh, it's like, boy. Dude, so now you're going to start a fire. So you got to tie this down. He's like, no, I'm not going that far. It's like, this thing is going to fly off. <laughs> so I finally got him to tie it down. And he had, this is the first time he had heard it start. This is the first time he had gotten on it. He was all jazzed, huh? Yeah, but he was going to get killed because you know, <laughs> the brake, we didn't hook up the brake. The seat was loose. And, you know, it's just... Wanted to ride it. Speaking about That's safety, it. I'm sure he did it without a helmet. He too, failed right? miserably. <laughs> failed miserably. <laughs> failed miserably on all of that. But he'll be there at the show. Um, we had a couple other questions. I'd I want like to get to, to some him. of those. Yeah, you will. Uh, believe me. Mine's uh, up now if you want to talk to him. Well, how could we not do that? Hook him up, would you? Here, let me give you all these. Right, give me five minutes. All right, great. Folks, th- this just in. Myron Bailey, you know, what would a show special be really without having the chance to talk to Myron? I'm sure that. Um, I'm sure this will be a treat. It's going to take us a second. Uh, Charles, join us a little bit late, but that's okay. Um, Ray's Rangel, what's happening, man? Uh, Ray's, what's up? Hey, you know, Charles, not only not only have I heard this from you, where Charles has gotten some props about being a part of the <clears throat> initial stages of some startup businesses, but he was very, I think, um, much a part of incentivizing, not incentivizing, but motivating Tim. Yep. From small engine cams. Yep. And I think that there's some other guys that are probably lurking out there, including that dog in the background. What's up, Vernu David? Uh, hey, do you guys make uh, fuel tanks? Yes. You do? How can folks find out more about that? Uh, they can message me on, on uh, Facebook, and I can send them pictures and what may have you pricing. Looks like Jake Moe already answered and said, yes, they do. Very nice. Catch cans as well, right? That's yes. right. Great. Um <laughs> Charles said, hadn't had a chance to hear much about the intake. Can you hold up and walk us through the intake again, just what you thought about when you were making those things? And what can folks expect from that thing? Can we expect the gain? Can we expect? Um, yeah, the, the intake was originally made so it fits um, the head as a bolt-on piece because a lot of guys don't go as far as, 
you know, welding it and changing the intake um, location on it. But this one here has the high velocity tapered intake and it's made for a, um, a, boot, a boot fit like 34 millimeter. This is for your, your guys, Charles. The, this, this intake was designed for the drag bikes right now with yeah, a focus the, on some of the street applications that come. But so as, so, a, as more of a bolt on piece, because we can do anything from a simple bolt on piece all the way through something, you know, even like what Charles and, and us have done and, and doing a tunnel port type cylinder head to where you're not having a bolt on anymore. Yeah. Because you, you, you want the you want the intake to be a little bit bigger. Well this one was designed so they can bolt it on without too much stuff and with a bigger carburetor. Yeah. Well we uh, we've brought him up, he's asked a question about it. The other nice thing about the show is that you'll get to see and feel and touch and talk more about Oh, there's my main My man, Myron. He'll be joining us for a sec uh, on the, the podcast in just a second. Once again, folks, uh, especially those of you in the Motor City who have been staying up late, uh, right now, Myron has to go through a series of things before he gets ready to come on. He's got makeup. Uh, he has ah. a script that he goes through. and He's got to get out of those scrubs. He's got, he's got people back there that give him prompts, and we're going to let Myron <laughs> uh, get himself together. I've got to put on these headphones. We got a couple questions before we get to the Motor City Minute, and the question, actually, it's a question. Oh, hey, Steve Capito, uh, looking forward to seeing you at the reunion as well. Steve's one of the earlier folks that uh, had pre-registered. I think he has a few bikes that are going to be at the show. Shout out to my man Calman, another uh, Detroit good friend. Uh, Calman asks if the January Roadkill event in Tulsa are they going to allow many bikes to race down the track? Here's what I know. In fact, this would be about as good of a time to mention it as ever. Um, I will not be representing Roadkill starting 2018. Uh, you know, they, they were just bought by Discovery 10. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. so they've got, they've got some changes there. I'm an independent guy. I'm like a hired gun. So I come in. I do my deal. It's like a, a comedian. You, you get booked in the big room or the small room, or you get booked for a week or a day so i come and i go we make them laugh and sometimes we come back sometimes we don't sometimes it takes a while but my days there unfortunately will be coming to an end at least for now uh, but i do know uh from talking to david freiberger even yesterday a couple things that the roadkill zip tie drags will be coming back to tulsa oklahoma and they are mini bike friendly there for more information just go to their website or talk to my man matt over there at the Tucson Dragway for information there, Calman. And who knows, if I can, I may get up there. But you know how I am. I'm kind of a prick. You don't renew my deal, you're probably not going to see me at the first event, right? It's kind of like, just got to do what you got to do sometimes. Yeah. So uh, let them hear your silence for a little while, but you'll be drag racing there, as well as the Pontiac Roadkill Nights. Uh, it's mini bike friendly in terms of the event itself, Calman, so make sure you keep checking that out. Uh, look forward to that. I had a great time there with Calman, and that leads me to a question that I received. I actually had a question that was asked of me from, was it our man Mike? He wanted to know um, what my most favorite part was of my trip to Detroit. And I would have to say that it's the people. Without a doubt, uh, although I did enjoy riding the velodrome, but not that was not that was not as much fun as the people that I met. And an example of that. Now, will everybody be able to hear Myron as well? No. It's just <clears throat> only in the headphones. So only in the headphones? Yeah. So then, Ed, put those on, would you? And let me see if I you could. pass them around if you need to. Hey, Myron, can you hear me? Yes. 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 <laughs> Yes, 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 <laughs> Instantly. Yeah, it's just like what was that chia pet? Yeah. Hey, chia it's the Motor pet. City Minute with my main man Myron Bailey and Myron. I didn't know that I was going to see you, and I couldn't be any happier. What's happening, my man? 
Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I fell asleep. I worked hard today. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks for getting up, and thanks for joining us. I knew you were taking care of your mom's. How's she doing? I wanted to ask you. Well, I got I got a little bit of uh, family problems, but, you know, I, I ain't going to get off into all of that. It's all about the podcast, so let me shine with y'all. Hey, uh, what have you been up to People back there? Ed, nice nice hoodie you got. He nice said he loved your shirt. He loved your shirt. That's that crispy mini love. Yep. We got Scott it here. Seven. I mentioned earlier, Myron, that yes, during my I trip to Detroit, uh, I, I had a really cool time with uh, Scott over at Crispy Minis. You remember we were out there at the Velodrome, and he helped that young kid out with his uh, Coleman. Uh, have you been riding with Scott? I know yes, you guys have been out and about recently. Yes, sir. We was out there at the Crispy Compound, me and Big Son getting it in. Tell those guys a little bit about Scott's compound there. I've described it as like Nirvana. It, you know, how do you describe it when people ask Scott's you about place it? Is a place. Scott's place is a place of many rides. You can come out there and get it in. He ain't discriminatory or nothing like that. He's a good guy. And he can build some bikes and everything else. Me and Big Son had a good time. And plus, I wiped out. Ugh. You wiped out? <laughs> Are you all right? Yep. What happened? No, I didn't get hurt. It was on the dirt. Well, you sometimes... You still get hurt on the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Ed said you can get hurt on you the dirt. Good time up there? No, sir. I, I rode in the dirt, flipped over the handlebar, and separated my shoulder. Well, when you hit it, the ground, oh. <laughs> you yeah. know, whether it's concrete or dirt, it don't matter. Yeah. Gonna... Yeah. Now, were you wearing were you wearing your helmet? You're usually very good with a helmet. Did you have your helmet on? Yes, sir. I totally did. Great. Does Big Sun ride with the helmet too? Yes, sir. We got videos on the. Uh, Facebook page. Great, Myron. That uh, they're a good example. We were talking about how important that is, and and this goes to you too. You know me well enough, so if we have anybody that you know is acting the fool or maybe doesn't have the ability to, or the means, we got a few helmets. If somebody needs a helmet, we got some helmets to take care of some friends. Yes, sir. Uh, matter of fact, we need to sell some Evil Ed helmets. <laughs> Did you like the shirt? Have you seen the shirt? And, and the hat. And the hat. <laughs> Did you like the hat and the shirt? They both were sweet. What about a Myron Bailey limited it. edition hat or shirt? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, take, I'll take either one. Now, Myron, I know it was late notice. And I know that you were tending to some personal issues, but I wanted to let you know that I had a little bit of a a little bit of help. I had that two hundred dollar voucher from Southwest from when they I had a terrible time with Southwest going to St. Louis. I've got to tell you, not only did I get rerouted going there, but as I was departing, finally going home, we left the airport in about 30 minutes into it doesn't the pilot come on to tell me that there's an issue with the plane and they got to turn around and go back to st louis <sighs> like i couldn't get the fuck there then i couldn't get out of there so i i ran and i got on a plane to go to nashville to la instead of flying into burbank but i forgot what i was talking about um <laughs> anyways <laughs> Hey, I think you're alluding. Oh yeah, I, so I had a south, so I had a, I had a Southwest voucher. Yeah. Because I had been, uh, they flew me all around the country instead of just taking me to St. Louis. They gave me a two hundred dollar voucher, which I was willing to share with Myron. Yet, um, and the shady hotel, but it, it was just too tough. My heart was in the right spot, but I think our timing was off. We would have loved to have had you come out. Hey, I'll still come out, and. Um if the, if the vouchers are still valid, I'll bring my condoms and hit them hookers. Oh. <laughs> well, I'd have to get clearance on that one. 
I'm on both. I don't even think I'd be able to get the condoms, let alone go out for the hookers. But you'd probably have a good time here. You don't need no hookers. You're 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 a, you're a popular podcast uh, celebrity. So you, you know you just go out and they would flock to you. Hey, uh, Myron. No, that that's why you're here. So did you get to the Candyman Extravaganza too? We were talking about that earlier. Did you? What was your report from that? What did you hear about that event? I heard it was beautiful as usual, but I didn't get to go because of work. What kind of turnout did they have there? Do you know? Oh, it's always mad. It's, it's always mad. It's a whole bunch of cats that come and have a good time and uh, enjoy riding and everything. You know, that's what it's all about. Myron, Mike was there shooting. You remember Mike? Uh, we hung out with him, I think, did our trip to Detroit. He was the guy that took the photos all those nice urban shots of the bikes that ran on roadkill. Remember the photographer, Mike? Yes. He uh, he posted the pictures of the Candyman extravaganza, too. Many of them were the bikes launching off the start line. He had some really cool images there, like 40-so images. I'm not sure if the, the listeners may have uh, seen that, but on Facebook, yeah. you can check it out. It's the Candyman extravaganza. He, this was extravaganza number two, his second one of the year. Um, I'm hoping to get some of these guys out. You know, we always talk about you coming out here or maybe some of the Detroit guys coming out here, but I've been encouraging these guys lately to come out and see what's happening at the Detroit scene. So maybe we can realize that next year. Either we get you out here or a few more of us come out and see you guys in Detroit. Oh, I'm coming out there. I'm definitely coming out there. Once those forest fires stop. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's no joke, brother. I'm telling you. Uh, earlier in the podcast, I hope you Thank you. Uh, we had two fires since I've lived in this home. One of them, the station fire, you could see the fire off to my left from the garage. The most recent fire, which was here about a month ago or two ago, called the Latuna Fire, you could see it from my back deck. And it goes from reading it in the newspaper. It goes to a much different deal when you can see it from your home. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, we did things like get our papers together. You know, all the, all the shit that, you know, your mortgage or your deed or whatever the hell you have. You know, or the few things that you tried to get together. And my rolling papers. Uh, so what's happening with you for the what's what's happening with you for the rest of the month? I know you're not going to be at the show. So what are you going to be doing this Saturday? Uh, I gotta go hang out with the family. Um, you know, things in my neck of the corner. Um, I got a lot of elders in my family that's up in age, so um, I gotta spend time with them. You know, you know that day of um, you know when you gotta cross over is soon to come. So well, I good. won't talk about all that, but you know. No, it's nice that you're spending time with them. You know, and. Can you still hear me there, Myron? I'm not sure if we if we broke up there. You still with me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I good. I realized have... that three seconds left. That's all right. Hey, look, uh, one last thing here before we let you go. We'll have probably a year-end podcast after the event where we can take a look back at what happened and try to collect as many of the photos as we can. We'll do our best to feed our friends in Detroit with some live videos from Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. Uh, we'll encourage everybody to hashtag JMBR on their photos so that although you won't be here physically, you'll be here in our minds, and we'll do our best to keep you abreast as well as all the guys back there in Detroit with all the shenanigans from the upcoming show. And oh, we- yes. yes, sir. Say hi to Eric and all the guys over at Stutz. Say hi to uh, Crispy Minis and my man Calman uh, and Big Son. Thanks for dropping in with us, Myron, and we'll check up with you uh, after Joe's Thank mini you, bike sir. reunion, man. Thank you, sir. Can you say hello to Evil Ed for me? Go ahead. Say, What's say up, I Myron? Don't... What's happening? One time in the sea. <clears throat> Flick the wrist. Myron, any shout-outs you want to give before <laughs> you take off? <laughs> I love y'all. Love you, too. <laughs> All right, that was uh, Myron Bailey. 
uh, Have hosting. a good one, Myron. Love that guy. Hosting our Motor City Minute. You two evil head and waiting on my shirt and hat. Brought to you okay. by Stutz Performance. All right. That, that, that three-second uh, three delay kills it. is a little <laughs> bit tough. Plus, he, he was sleeping, so I'm glad that he, he took a minute to get with us. Thank you, Myron. He wants a shirt, a hat, He decals. wants a shirt and a hat. Did he get all that in? Shirt, hat, decals. Whatever else he bled. Here you go. Uh, so what do we need to do with this? Can we take this monitor? No, just put it down. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Great. Can you grab the iPad? Yeah, I wish Myron could have joined us out there. Uh, he really thinks a lot of a lot of the guys out here, and we all have some fun with him. Hey, Brian Frank, how about any shout-outs uh, from your end? Anybody that you wanted to say hi to or anybody that um, you're looking forward to seeing at the upcoming show? Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to Tim Iskey. Tell him thank you. Thank we'll you see for Tim. everything that you do. Yeah, yep, we'll, um, we'll see. see we'll see you out at the show. I appreciate all your business. Um, thank you, Eric from Studs. Appreciate your business and all all the products that you buy from me. Um, shout out to everybody out there in Detroit, man, and out here in Cali. You guys keep them riding. Keep running my pipes or our pipes. They're everywhere. At least amongst the group of guys that we're hanging out with. We have a question from Chad Janrath. Wants to know, TAV or racing clutches, do you guys really recommend? Mm, depends what you're doing. But, uh, I mean, I like both. What, was a, what, would be a more, um, what would be a more suitable application for, like, a racing clutch, for example? Uh, okay. Obvious, drag bikes. Yeah, I mean, for a big flathead, I mean, big junior stuff, you're going to run a converter, obviously. You know, with for the uh, small block stuff, you run a you know a two or a three disc bully. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, I think Ian was selling a three disc bully. He's always coming across stuff. The torque converters we talked about. In fact, we've got one that we're giving away too. Ed and I, bully bully clutches are, are really nice. The disc clutches, um, very universal, especially for the shorter tires that we run on a lot of our bikes. The torque converters are more designed for a larger circumference tire, so it depends what, what you're running. Everything has a purpose. Yeah, you can make the torque converter, um, you know, functionable for a, for a rider bike, too. Yeah, Dave Miller said that that was the, the single most important thing you can really do to hop up the performance of a bike is a torque converter. We'll, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll be we'll giving one away. Absolutely. I've got one on Frankenstein. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah. it's a, it's a, you know... A little bit heavier bike, not as high horsepower motor, and it makes it real easy to go. It's so smooth. Yep. It really is. It's not the fastest, no. you know, for sure. But I think what I'll have with that is just what I want. It's something that looked cool that I knew I could just you pull that that pull cord half half a pull and it and go fires up. Yep. I was telling my brother I, I really love the suicide brake on that thing. Yeah, that yes. bike's a trick. Until you're coming downhill and you make a right hand turn. <laughs> <laughs> and because the way it's set up on that bike is you know the the suicide doesn't come to the handlebar where you can kind of you know do both it's down here so yeah. you got to you got to take your your yeah. hand off of that handlebar but i'm you know i'm just putting around where i where i had the most fun and be, me and d been having some fun getting at it but when d and i were not just riding at tucson yeah yeah i seen the video clip it was so much fun it, i mean that that bike was just so nice and there was a little bit of you know dips in the road and some big pieces of concrete that at any drag racing parking lot you're going to find <laughs> And we were going pretty damn fast. Yeah, you know? you were <laughs> we were having yeah. fun. That was it. And that's that's the whole thing. The the riding element is so damn much fun. And that's what we gotta try to find a way to do a little bit more. You know, it's it's just one of those things where I know Sean and I, I think Jake. I know D's rolled out with Jake and Midgey, I think's his name. Midgey or Mia. Me Mia. Mm. Me, that's that's Jake's friend. He's got that built mini bikes Instagram page or whatever that, that thing is. Oh, I thought that was Jake's actually, but though I think Jake's helping him out. You know how that goes. <laughs> uh, we have had a, a lot of cool bikes that have shown up there. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. You know, I'm looking at all my, my stuff. Yeah, I don't know how we're doing on time. Best question. What's the best question? Yeah, I was looking for that one too. So far, you know, I, I like the question. I like the question from Cliff personally Ed ultimately decides because behind all the cool pipes and pipes and giveaways and eight inch wheels and you know slicks and intakes there's just a cold slap of the face that you have to be mindful of which is safety yeah safety so the 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 
question that Cliff asked you about the messaging that you would give contemporaries out there that well, are that active. That was a good question, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the questions that we have, whether it's clutch applications and and or any other question that we may have had, to me, the it kind of pales question? in comparison. Uh, we've got two of them to give away. Uh, the intake question is 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 from Charles, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. So Charles needs a, you know, that Charles, I think, sometimes gets taken for granted. I say that we have a couple winners. I, I say that Cliff Judd wins the small engine cams, and then we'll send Charles the case of brake clean, which he'd probably love. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know. He could use it. He could use it. And Charles, if you wanted the carburetor cleaner or the... Knock her loose, whatever you want, Charles. Oh Lord! You show up at Joe's mini bike reunion. He might like that. In fact, Charles, would you? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have your chance to respond. Charles, uh, tell us what was your? Because I may have mistaken. Could you tell us what your winning horsepower pull was at the Dyno last year? I know. If, okay, so just just to confirm, because he'll say, he. I'm sure he would like to add a horsepower. Or two, right? <laughs> so we'll, we'll let him. You know how it is through the computer. You can, Thirty-three right. goes to thirty-five in, in one click. If it's oh. 29, 29.2, 29.4, I always, I always put the last part too. Like mine was twenty-two point nine. It could be the difference maker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It tells you. Yeah. You guys still have fun going back and forth, don't you? Yeah. Oh, Charles, yeah. Charles, and me are. Yeah. You looking forward to seeing him on Saturday? Yeah, we don't see him as much. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't. We still chat back and forth on Facebook, but I, uh, my understanding on the dyno, I was going to ask you, you know what. So what you said there's going to be some changes with the dyno this year? No, no, no. Just, lo there's just no, location. location. Oh, location. Yeah, yes. by the front gate. Here's what I've done, and I'm very open. Just like I'm open to changes on the judging and, and whatever, Ed. But believe <laughs> me, like the last thing I want to worry about is anything. Yeah. I, I, I want I want folks to have ownership in this. On the dyno, I had tried so many different things over the years, honestly, from trying to give away stuff. 29.72. 29.72. Thank you, Charles. 29.72 was the winning horse. 29.872? No, 72. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty stout so far. Mm -hmm. Do we think we got somebody that could beat? round that up to 30, but, yeah. <laughs> That's what I may have Not done. Not quite, bud. <laughs> but I, I went to 32, so I was the one talking 30. Nobody yet. So, he wanted to hit 30 bad. So, can we, you think we could do that, Ed? You think somebody will do 30? Maybe. A big block would do it. Mm -hmm. Are you getting tired and cold like I am? Yes. Why is that? Because we're old? It is not cold here. Oh. No. Feels good, no. actually. See these guys? They're ready to go. <laughs> no. How about E? Know. I'm in there watching the last inning. Fucking E shows up with that coat. I said, you, I thought it was the guy from The Prophet going to tell me how to fucking run my business. <laughs> so Charles tells me he's not going to enter a bike on the dyno this year. So oh. he's going to give everybody a chance, you know, because nothing's fair. It's it's unfair for him to enter. Well, he's he, he has <laughs> one. He, he, he has one. Yeah. He, so he, 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 right now, right? he knows. He knows. He, he showed up and he won. <laughs> it's just not fair. Well, but to, if if I Charles say, would say that himself. I'm playing with him. He knows that. I know. I know you are too. Well, he just but, said twenty nine point seven eight. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying <laughs> he's going to keep going up. Round it up. We would go, We might as well round it up. Mostly. Well, we got a little bit of time to go. He's going to add a tenth every minute. <laughs> yeah, so, there you so go. So get up there sure. by the time the podcast is <laughs> over. Well, yeah. I know I'll be looking forward to seeing him as well as seeing the you dyno could have been off by half a horsepower. Could have been. Yeah. Could you never been. know. <laughs> well, now I'm going to have Lou from the dyno calling up all pissed off saying his dyno's not too. Yeah. I liked his dyno. No, so you were saying there's going to be some changes as far as... The location. We're location and, and how people yes. are... Yes, if I could. Thank you. Yes. The dyno has been placed in, in, the, in the most suitable spot the first time he showed up because who knew? It's like it was a... You know, you come in, it was right there. It's like parked there. Well, it's after a couple years, around. I would hear either through my swap meet guys or last year it was my wife. She's like, we can't hear a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. again, me, Joe's mini bike, missed the obvious. I'm running around here thinking everything's good. I I, I don't realize that the dino's making half of the people tone deaf. <laughs> so it was great. Like people walking by with hats, and as soon as they rev it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their hats would fly off. Really? Well, that's yeah. cool. It was great. Oh, I love that part. But here, there's the other thing too. It's like people were way too close. I had people inside the dino while the bikes were going on. You can't do any of that shit. I think the owner should be okay to be inside. Yeah, well, the, well, the owner of the bike. Yeah. Well, I don't even want him there because if anything happens, like I, I don't, I don't mind him being on that door near Lou. I want Dew in there or Lou in there operating the dyno. If it's your bike, you hang out right in the side. I don't want your buddy and your buddy who drove you guys up there <laughs> and your buddy who owns the bike all inside that yeah. fucking that shrapnel box. Yeah. I also, I have a yellow 
uh, tape that we put around. But as soon as I leave, or as soon as they go anybody leaves, it. they just it's easy to duck under. So I'll just I have one guard. Again, I have a plethora of guards this year. I have I'll have one rotate. Just so and you know we're not there to do crowd control. Like we want to have a good time, but guys, anything can happen. Yeah. Like if there's a skid mark there. My my other mini bike. I started it up. It went up the wall. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Clutch sure. flew off in the drive. So anything can happen, and I just don't want it went up the wall. Yeah, my wife, she, was, she gave me this look. She didn't even say anything. She said, get in the house. That's happened to me. <laughs> get she in saw the, the whole thing just go up, and I just put that thing That's down. That's happened to me get. many times. <laughs> we were out there one time. Speaking of going up the wall, we started the bike, and it just started, Rah! and my brother, the bike took off like that. My brother picked it up. He was jumping in the air, up and down, up and down. <laughs> yeah. You can't get the thing to shut off. kill switch. So that tells the story. <laughs> I'm a guy who lives in one of these complexes. It was, it was like planned community. And you know, y'all have the same house, and they drive the same fucking Camry, and they have the same clothes, and they work at the same company. They're like, they're like the Stepford wives. <laughs> One guy was crazy, and he was at the mini bikes. So he's working on his bike, working on his bike, him and his friend. Supposedly, they started up. The thing, the throttle sticks, it goes out of his garage, across the street, and right into the neighbors across the street through their garage door. Oh no. Oh, and, and you know how some of these, these these track communities, you know, your your place is here and then there's a road and then there's another one right there. Literally went through the street into that garage and I would have loved to have seen that. <laughs> Could you imagine the stories? Because we all have our own. Yeah. And then there's like a trillion people out there that have had many bike accidents. Maybe we ought to have a show just for that. Another show that I want to do is just we're gonna get a monitor and look at the current Craigslist of mini bikes and then some of the prices and make some of the comments and i and can't believe the prices they're asking for well we, we need to do that we need to just get the monitor you will set it up we'll go to craigslist and we'll start at la uh i go everywhere looking for them so just like you do we'll do the vegas we'll do the arizona we'll go to detroit we'll go to colorado well we'll see what people show and we'll see the different prices that they ask it, it's, it's crazy because some stuff is screwed up some of right? it's a steal and, and yeah yeah they're, they're asking. They're they're they think that okay. I saw a set of Bonanza fenders, nice ones, for three hundred bucks. Say okay, okay. So, this guy gets his crusty fenders. And, and, was 300 300 bucks. Bucks. and now he wants three hundred oh, because yeah. he saw that set of fenders. It's the Bear Jackson factor. People see a Mustang like, sell for no, hundred thousand dollars on Bear Jackson. Right, you know that better than me. Cherry is this other pair of fenders here? No. Where do you get off asking three hundred for your crappy fenders? Well, wasn't that the insulated. same thing that yeah, happened on that? Because you saw a set selling for three hundred, that don't make your set three hundred. I had a guy call me up this week, <sighs> and uh, we're kind of closing down the podcast for those of you guys who've been hanging out listening. I'm, I'm still looking at, through it, some of these questions. Any more? Any more on there? Um, I'm looking. He can help me. Uh, Charles, 29.72 horsepower, 29.78. Don't forget about the elevation. <laughs> ah. <laughs> that was Charles. That was Charles Harris coming in on that. Charles Harris is our pizza boy. They call him. Uh, I rather hit pizza man. Uh, he's a cool guy. Uh, I had fun meeting him back there in Detroit. He likes to go fast. He's got a couple good jockeys. He built some good bikes. You know Charles Harris. I'm sure you've talked to him. Yep. Uh, I, I just guessed, then I went and looked at it. I, I didn't miss that part. Uh, all right. Anyways, I need to give some shout-outs as we kind of close up. We're here uh, pre-Joe's Mini Bike Reunion with the 2017 Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Hall of Fame inductees, Frank and Brian Franquez from F&B Racing. We've had a good time here. We had some cheap laughs. Ed, so far we haven't been attacked by any bees. I know. Oh. Like, what the A couple hell? moths. No big deal. But because we're running a little bit uh, longer... Uh, and it's getting a little bit cooler here. Uh, Ed and I are getting old, man, so we're starting to fall asleep and get the, the chills and shit. That's you know, it's like, time. remember? How about some shout outs, Ed? Okay. All right, let me. I'm going to try to whip through these kind of quick, and I'm going to continue to forget some folks, but I'll, I'll do the best I can, and we have a lot. <clears throat> uh, we already mentioned Scott from Crispy Minis, uh, Tom Drzewicki, our friends over at CRC uh, and Roadkill as well. We look forward to seeing Alana, your friend, and maybe David Freiberger. That would be cool. Uh, Charlie Reynolds. We met uh, online through Tim Iskey, Justin from uh, Retro Mod Mini Bikes. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Seems like a cool guy. Hopefully, he's up in Campbell, California, struggling with some of those fires. So we hope you're doing well up there. Shout out to you, Justin. And uh, set up a booth. 
Sell some of those retro mod mini bikes. Yeah, why not? Should I saw something for $400? I'd buy it. Bring it down. I'll buy that thing. Uh, thank you to all the folks who pre-registered. We mentioned that. Thank you to the folks at SEMA for the SEMA Ignited. Look forward to uh, handing out some of those coupons. That's 20 bucks. like if you wanted to go. Yeah. It's like more than the cost to register your stupid mini bike. It's like, I don't get it. You throw it on a can of this knock and loose, you're making friggin' money coming here, Ed. Uh, my man, Calvin Carisi. Uh, Dan Rolden, Arlo Davis, Justin Wilcox, Vernu David, Tommy Corona, Mike Zidbin. Mike Zidbin, he's the guy who sends me a, an email after every podcast. He says, sorry, I slept. I missed it. <laughs> Quit fucking telling me. <laughs> Just watch it. <laughs> Willie Bush, Debbie VHJ. At first, I thought that was one of the new ways they say vagina. It's called the JJ. <laughs> so I didn't know. Sorry about that. No. Uh, <laughs> Curtis, <laughs> Richard <laughs> White, uh, my tote goat buddy. Richard, are you going to help me out on Friday? Get over here. In fact, once again. I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking for a few good men. <laughs> I'm looking for a few good volunteers on Friday. Help me load these friggin' mats up. C V Park, La Crescenta, the Hindenburg area, behind the dog park. Uh Lori or uh, Lori. Corey Tellerico. That's my cousin. I even screwed him up. Jim Jackson. Thank you for listening, Jim. Mike Clement, Otis Wisham, Tim Miskey. How many times are we gonna mention you? Should we should call this the Tim Miskey Podcast? <laughs> Congratulations again to our small engine cam winner, who was it? Judd. Cliff Judd. Neck. Cliff. Cliff Judd. Yep. Who knows? Maybe Tim can even bring your cam. Just let him know which one you need, Cliff. And to Charles, congratulations. You want a, a case of brake clean. Just what you need. Yeah. Use some of this grease for <laughs> when you lube up before you work out. I don't know. Do something with it. <laughs> Eric Shingles, Dwayne Richmond, uh, Justin Bett, Hayden Prendergast, Joey Acchiavelli. That's Joey, our, uh, our 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 old mini bike racer, the Dave Mil the real mini bike champion. He yeah. said, Chris Carrock, an old friend of mine from Texas or uh, from New York, living in Texas. He's one of three people going back from our high school reunion. Have fun at that. Mike Champagne, Jack Bishaw, Jeff and Holland Ramsey, Nathan Tucker, Zach Fair. Oh, Zach owns Gear Star Transmissions. Okay. Gear Star Transmissions and Gear Vendor Overdrives. Mm -hmm. He's the man. Both of those guys. You want to go fast? Period. Those two guys. They were on gear vendors on our trophy truck at work. Yeah, gear vendors. Rick Johnson does a fool around. Rick and I are going to work together to do this little thing, hopefully at the O'Reilly's Auto Show in Pomona in March, where you have a chance. You know, they cruise around all these fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. they, they can only go like five miles an hour. It's like, dude. It's no fun. We want to pull a couple people over, put them in this little area here. Let them rip. We'll call it rolling rubber. It's not going to be a burnout contest. Just let them do a little bit. A little, just, <laughs> let's do a little bit. We'll, yeah. Let's see if we can. So we're going to try to get something going there, a little rolling rubber at some of these static car shows. Just try to spruce it up. Incidentally, we'll continue our Cackle Fest mini bike style at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. I won't do it on the hour. We'll do it you know, probably at 10, maybe at 12, and then maybe at 2. We'll give the neighbors a little bit of a break, especially if that dyno is going to be filtering through their backyard yeah. um ira gabriel uh, tom g peter the whole team over at sema look forward to working with you guys in fact it's a privilege i'll be there ed helping them with feature vehicle move in uh, i host the sema cruise on friday if you guys come out there you get to see me work with a little crowd of about sixty thousand people 60, a little one fucking helicopters grandstands free helicopter ride? i'm big in finland there you go. Yeah, I have a big fan base. You're probably bigger there than me. You're bigger than than me everywhere. Yeah. Tom G, I'll bring Evil Ed. I'll bring Evil Ed. Well, actually, you're still tired from last year's SEMA show. Yeah, still catching up, what? That was a long walk. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to do this podcast. Come follow me. <laughs> Three miles later. Oh, man, you got you got to do the Barrett Jackson. We'll bring the uh, we'll bring the cart. We'll bring the scooter. Yeah, you got to do the Barrett Jackson and the Mika, man. You walk back and forth 5,000 times. Well, Seba's 2.3 million square foot. You'll be oh, you're, yeah, you're still yeah. walking. Emmanuel was there. He he broke in. I, I came home and my legs couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, most folks get there. They get there Tuesday, and they work the show Tuesday, Wednesday, and they don't even stay the whole duration of the show. They go back. They're there for two days. They're up 48 hours. They're eating, drinking, smoking, toking, driving, jiving. Have a good time. We're there the Thursday before the show yeah. until the Saturday after. We're there like 11 days. 
So it's a pacing thing. Yeah, I'm only at our shows typically from Wednesday or Tuesday night through Saturday night, you know, yeah. type deal for the Meekum and, and yeah. Barrett Jacksons. And you got to pace it, yourself. It, it gets tiring and that, that whole week long out at uh, Reno. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Your legs are just hot, shot. Well, hot happy. August nights, you know, yeah. is all of that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're at. Yeah. We went to every venue. and <laughs> We may even try to you. do something with them as well with Gear Vendors Overdrive. So maybe we'll see you up there. Very I nice. went up there. Excuse me. Those hot dogs are starting to come back to life here. Catching up to you. Um, the the hot, hot August night event, I just know so many people that I like that go there. Uh -huh. I don't like being there. I don't like to go anywhere where there's a $2.50 chip at a gaming table. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Makes me a little leery. I normally don't go in there. I'm, yes. I'm it's not quite Vegas. It's not quite Vegas. Let's just say, you know, you know, you go to Vegas and you stop at Prim because you need gas and you go into that casino. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different than when you keep driving to get to the casino in Vegas. Oh, yeah. A little oh, bit yeah. different up there in Reno, too. Uh, nevertheless, though, it is hot and it is August and they are at night. So for that part, they got all that working. Uh, Ron Thomas, Pierre Bruguil. Pierre is a cool guy I met. I almost sold him my tandem seat for my nicer. It didn't fit his bike, but turned out to be a good friend. Uh, John Penton. My buddy Cam White, my old roadkill buddy Cam, good to meet you guys. And my, I got a celebrity friend, Tom Hay, who works over at Entertainment Tonight. Where is Tom Hay? Ed, I probably missed a few thousand people. Again, I wanted to give a special shout out and acknowledgement to my good buddy Mark Espin and his wife Janet, who are unfortunately uh, trying to find a spot. Doing their best. Their home burnt to the ground in Santa Rosa. Man, and that's a shame. So, Mark, we're here for you. I can use some help laying down some mats at Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. you got a nice place to stay. We wear pretty much similar style clothes. Uh, we wish you the best, all joking aside. Guys, it's been fun. How about any shout-outs? Brian, yeah, Frank, want to say? Go I ahead, got, Brian. I got some shout-outs. Um, uh, we had a good, a good, uh, I had a good friend of mine um, passed away not too long ago. Have you guys heard um, his name? They called him Little Compton. Have you guys heard about that? Anyways, I, I wanted to say, say, uh, give a little shout out to him and his, and you know his his family. Rest in peace, Little Compton. Um, also for the crews that are continuing to keep the scene alive and, and on the West Coast. Um, f first of off, the the Thirsty Riders. A shout out to Lay, to Christian, to uh, Michael, to to Duke. Uh, shout out to uh, the the Squirrel Gang, which you mentioned earlier. R I E, um, S G Nova, uh, D Red. Um, FLR, those guys just opened up a shop down off of Broadway. Shout out to um, to Nine and a couple of other of their of their crew members. Um, Brian, welcome them, please, to the show. We'd love for yeah, them to come out. Yeah. Uh, whatever we could do, whether they wanted to come out as a participant, we'll give them a discounted rate. Uh, you have the you have the F and B rate for any of those guys. It's fifteen dollars to register if they wanted to set up a booth to showcase their their maybe their club. And some of their riders, and maybe they've got some photos. They'll have a, they'll maybe they have some decals. We'll have a special area for you guys. Any any yeah. of you club guys, uh, we've still we got a day or two. Send me a text. Send me an email. Just tell me you're coming. Yeah, you guys heard that. I know a lot of the crews are going to be there. So great. And the, the helmet idea was great because a lot of these guys would appreciate that. Okay. You know, there's uh, no speed limit. There's um, there's a couple of new uh, other crews out there that I'm, I might be forgetting, but. Just these these are the these are the core guys that are continuing to keep it going on the on the West Coast and you know obviously you know yeah well GT's has, has always been there you yes know, shout out to Rafa and, and George he's doing big things obviously Charles um, East Side Racing has an event coming up at Barona Speedway uh, on the fourth so they're doing an eight mile drag uh, um, little event out there so you know any, any locals that haven't heard about it could go out there on the fourth and check out some of the West Coast bikes get down. Um, there's another event coming up, but it's sort of a, a, a secluded event. Um, so I'll let those people get that word out there. You know, they, they, they try to they they want to keep it low key. So some of the like, rides too, I noticed that some of the Grom rides they'll they'll have them promoted, and then others. They only tell certain people. Yeah. Yeah. And and then if you let's just say that there was a kind of a closed ride, and I just. It's almost like a gang. It's almost like you can't be bringing a friend in. There's no, there's no. Oh, I brought my buddy. Yeah, they they they, sure they want eight people. They want those eight people because or those twelve people because those are their. That's their group. They do things a certain way. They go certain things. They do certain that's things. It. So I get all that too. So yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out to MDR Roshane, 
uh, Charles. Hi, Roshane. Yep, yeah, Italian they're, brother. They're both, they're both from uh, 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 Mosley's crew. Um, who else am I missing? The most important, my girl, my son, my daughter. You know, shout out to them. Love you guys. And that's about it. Uh, pleasure to have you on. Congratulations. This was a no-brainer when, when we thought about the Hall of Fame, and especially after I had a chance to meet you guys and just see you out in the scene and then actually have your product and use it and see the notoriety it gets and all the popularity it has. It, it was easy to have you guys uh, be a part of the Hall of Fame. You'll wear it well. You'll be great ambassadors and representatives. And uh, I want to thank you personally for everything that you've do for our mini bike community and the fact that you're so cool friends and helped me out a thousand times whether it's working on this pioneer bike or frankenstein or some of these other applications that we have over here you're always fun and you always tell it like it is and uh Thanks for having us, my Joe. kind of guys yeah 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 thank you keep it real yeah thank you for that i'm looking forward to seeing you this saturday evil ed i'm looking forward to seeing you well, I'll be there. We're excited. First cup there. of coffee's on me. All right. All right. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Emmanuel, again, wish you um, wish you were going to be with us this Saturday, but we're going to work with uh, Andrew. Uh, have a good time doing that. All the folks that have uh, already committed to being a part of the show in any capacity, I want to thank you, our sponsors, our participants, our spectators, our car corral guys, our swap meters. Hey, how we hear from Mac? How's his, uh, how did his surgery go? Do we know? I don't think he went. He got sick again. Okay. Is he, is he okay? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, good. So Mac will be there. Get there early. Greg will be there early with swap meet stuff. Coker will be there on site. Scleroderma will be there on site um, offering water. We have the food trucks that are going to be showing up. We've got the dino showing up. We got Evil Ed Apparel. Shit, I'll even show up. How about that? It's Joe's hey. Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. This was a good one. And once again, congratulations to the New York Yankees. So take York on Yankees. the Houston Astros for the okay. AL championship series and who knows dodgers yankees this is joe from joe's mini bike reunion thanks to all our sponsors thanks for all our listeners thanks for all our viewers had a good one see you next time Bye.